Hello everyone and welcome to episode 36 of the TW2020 SuperMax64 series here on the channel. So it's a new year, 2003 for the save. As man, it's hard to believe once we hit September 2003, it will be 11 years of this save. As far as uh, this is, uh, it's almost, it's going to be kind of weird if we ever get to the point, I don't know if we will, because I think we are going to stop in 2004. Uh, for, because obviously probably around that time the new game will probably have most like you know 2004 2005 kind of era mods uh, but we'll see though you know, it's still a ways away but uh, that's just kind of thinking of you know if it's going to be a weekly series like it has been that, that's probably going to be around the time where uh, the mods starting to get turned out a little bit more but uh, we'll see though obviously it's all up to uh up to what it, and you know, because also, too, I think a lot of things I've seen about TW9, the editing is getting a lot more uh, user-friendly as far as being able to do stuff outside the game, just exporting it to a, uh, as far as a, uh, you know, a, a fucking Microsoft file and being able to just edit it there. Uh, you were always kind of able to do it, but you had to kind of, like, go a little bit around it and had to... It's a little bit more difficult than what it is now. Now they he's actually made it more user friendly and has made it to where uh, I think it's going to be a lot easier for people to mod stuff because I think that's a big thing with uh, with TW as of late, especially you know 2020 and 2016. Just the the way you had to edit mods and stuff, it just is such a daunting task already to do a mod, but to deal with the editor too on top of that didn't make it uh, any easier. But as far as uh, enough about. TW9, but uh, this episode, Super Mario 64 the Grand Prix, of course, kicks off the year. Uh, we will go through the Grand Prix here in a bit, because obviously with the new year, we have uh, a couple of big uh, announcements here as far as like the an annual awards. Sosha Kawada has won the wrestler of the year two times now for Kawada. Again, it is crazy how Masawa has never won it, and yet Kawada's won it twice, Kobashi's won it twice, and Tawei's won it, so... He's the only non-fourth uh, pillar to still not be rest of the year. T uh, Tag Team of the Year as well was also the Holy Demon Army. That's their third time winning the award. Uh, young rest of the year was Miko Satomura. Uh, that, that's awesome. Of course, Miko's great. Veteran of the Year, Bret Hart, who's won it in the past three years, pretty much since he signed with us. Female rest of the year was Akira Hokuto again. That's now 10. Crazy. Uh, she also won the Independent Wrestle of the Year like she's done last year, and now that's our fifth time winning that. Uh, UJPW has won the Company of the Year once again. <laughs> As, uh, yeah, obviously, we've been on a run since 1993. Long, long time being the, the best company of the year. Oz won the most improved, at least Super Max 64 won in the year 2000. Match of the Year was a, a UJPW matchup. This is the first non-100 to win it since 1994. It's, Chono and Kinsuke Sasaki against uh, Shin Yashimoto and Masato Tanaka at the Champion Carnival Finals. I believe that was for the All-Asia Tag Team titles as well, if memory serves me correct. But we did win the Car of the Year. Day 2, or Night 2, of the Tag League, uh, as far as in our previous episode, was the best card of the year. Kind of crazy uh, to think that a 98 uh, did as well. That hasn't been the, the case since 1997. And, uh, man, we break the streak of UJPW. And pretty much, uh, and then All Japan, of course, before the merger. Kind of crazy. Kind of crazy. We're, uh, we're at the point now where I think Super Max 64 is a viable threat for, uh, as far as, uh, over UJPW, as far as being an alternative. I think it's a real, real chance of it being that now that we're kind of on that level. Of course, Victor Quinones has won the, uh, Manager of the Year Announcer of the Year again, Mike McGurk. Color commentator Bobby Heenan, uh, which is uh, kind of great. It's only the second time he's won. He won it the first year in the save, and now here almost, you know, ten years later. Nick Patrick, referee of the year. Uh, what a bunch of shit that is. As, um, for the rest of the awards, I'll try to, yeah, let's back out. The, the kind of Power 500, so that was Su Super Max 64, which you see there. Uh, Ultimo Dragon, third. As, uh, yeah, we'll go any... Because I believe it's Squad Atawa, yeah, then Ultimo Dragon, Kaiji Mudo, Super Astro, Dean Malenko at 6, Messier Chona at 7. So we're getting now more Super X64 guys intertwined with the Power 500 top ratings. Because I think last year, 
2001, the Liger made it to sixth, which is still impressive. But now we're we have somebody that's third, so we might potentially one day. Uh, maybe in 2003, as far as the end of the year awards, maybe a Super Max 64 guy will be number one. You never know. But yeah, Owen, 22nd. Uh, Eddie Guerrero, 23rd. Kanemoto, 19th. Shinichi Fanaki, 21st. Uh, and there's Shin Yashimoto, of course. Uh, Nuki Sano, 18. Bret Hart, 17. Kinsuke Sasaki, 15. Or 16, rather. 15 Liger. 14 Sasuke. Wow, Pegasus there, 13. 13. It's Drew Nakayama at 12, who uh, just beat, as far as Kenta Kobashi, a story that literally 10 years in the making, as far as from his debut match to there, beats Kenta Kobashi and becomes the new junior, or the, that's the new junior, but the new Unified Grand Heavyweight Champion. Uh, Regal, who just got a concussion and is out for the uh, rest of this year. Yeah, major concussion, so he will not be ranked next year. Unfortunate, and especially a big break for, or a big loss, rather, for uh, the British Combat Club. Masawa, 10th. Kobashi, 9th. So, wow, the four pillars are almost not in the top 10. Uh, let's see, yeah, we were at 20, we talked about Eddie. There's Kakuchi at 24, Minoru Tanaka, 25, Vampiro, 26, Ferris and Lafon, 27 and 28, Brad Armstrong, 29th. As far as Akira Nogami, of course, uh, Lord Akira Kodokumi, 30th. Rick Steiner, 31st. Satoshi Kojima, 32. Masato Tanaka, 33. Shamrock, 34. Hayabusa, 35. Steve Williams, 36. Chris Jericho, 37. Damien, 666 at 38. 39 for Kurt Angle. Uh, he's in the top 50 now. Lance Storm, 40th. Johnny or Johnny Smith, 41st. Grant Anywa, 42nd. Silver King, of course, Golden King, at 43rd. Scotty Steiner, 44. Yuji Nagata, 45. Yoshiro Takeyama, 46. Sikosis, 47. Rey Mysterio Jr., 48. Otani, 49. Manabu Nakanishi, 50. And the, finally, the first non uh, UJBW Super Mac 64 guy is um, fucking Mean Mark Callis. Oh my. As uh, he obviously left the WWF for WCW. The Headhunters. And as far as 52nd and 53rd, Al Samurai, Takeo Omori. 55, Tuko Scorpio, 56, Tenzan, 57, Candido, 58, Davey Boy Smith, 59, Tataru, 60. It's pretty impressive, actually, he's that high. Uh, Dr. Wagner Jr., he jumped up from 218 to 60. Uh, Dr. Wagner Jr., at 61, he dropped back a little bit. Kyoshi Demora jumping up into the top 100, it's our 62nd. Of course, the, the uh, Junior Void Champion right now, Sting, at 63, so the next non Super Max 64 UJBW guy, Maso Fuchi, at fucking. Almost 60 years old, and he is still ranked very, very high. 48. Johnny A, 65. Douglas, there's another WCW guy in 66. Kind of funny, though. Dynamic dudes back to back there. Cactus Jack. Of course, uh, we've used him in the past, but you know, right now, still in WCW. So it looks like WCW is uh, number one here. Yeah, because they even signed Shawn Michaels. Wow. Uh, they made a big ass leap. Fucking Luther, though, is uh, 69th. Nice, he is killing it in rings. DDP, 70th. 71st. Oh, there we go. First WWF guy in Rick Rude. It's a funny they <laughs> Rick Rude and Maven on Superstars. That uh, That is a pretty mind-melting kind of scenario. That having Superstars in 2002 and, and Rick Rude and Maven having the match. Chavo Jr. at 72, Yoji Anjo at 73, so there's a couple of UW5 in rings, guys, there's Akira Okuto, Taru, as far as, uh, 75th, Ultimate War Warrior at 76, that's crazy that he's still doing a pretty high level, fucking Bobby Eaton's the US champ, Dragon Kid 77th, Izuka 78, Takata 79, Takara, uh, Fuku Fukoa, as far as, uh, she is 80th, Steve Austin, 81st, Ogawa, 82, and he's only had not even, as far as, not even, like, 15 matches, so that's kind of crazy, uh, but, uh, fucking Mike Rotundo, 83rd, Van Damme, 84, Sabisco, 85, Shinzaki, 86, Minor Suzuki, 87, Wellington Wilkins Jr., 88, Akatoshi Saito, at 89th, uh, 90th for El Hiro del Santo, Roshihase, 
Kyoko Inoue at 92, Masagatsu Funaki 93, Ricky Steamboat at 94, Mike Awesome 95. He's dropped down a little bit, so is Vader. Kind of crazy, Vader still going. As of our Jacques Rougeau, the Mountie, still doing WWF. Him and Hogan are a team, at The real American and the fucking Mountie, huh? Um, El Tijano, 98th, Tenta, 99. Asia Kong, 100. Bison Gomora, Yuki Shikao, 102. Road Warrior Animal, don't see Hawk anywhere. That's, that's not a good sign, Akira Maeda, 104. Pillman, 105. Arn Anderson, 106. Uh, of course, he's... The uh, UPW Heavyweight Champion right now, so that's kind of crazy. Um, definitely, we have him as, like, just kind of using him in uh, UPW. We're, you know, we're building a brand, a, a global brand, and we're trying to corner each market with that. Randy Savage, 107. Joshua Yamada at 108. And then Tomoko Watanabe at 109. Kurt Henning, 110. Billy Black, still doing well at 111. Kuga at uh, 112, Mark Marrow 113, Jack Roberts 114, Ray Trailer 115, Pat Tanaka, Joey Mags, fucking jumping Joey Mags, Lex Luger at 118, oof, Chichiro Nakano at uh, 119, 120 for Atlantis, Manor Fujita, uh, wasn't ranked, now this year at 121, Impressive stuff there, Tiger Mask 4, again jumping up from 350, 122, Mima Shimoda, 123, Dan Severin, 124, Ricky Santana, at 125, Volkan, 126, Manami Toyota, that's kind of crazy, she's so low on the, on the list here, Sabu at 128, uh, Bobby Eaton, 129, Yumi Fukawa, at uh, 130, 131 for Hogan, Hogan and Maven, having just, Maven just losing to everybody, <laughs> it looks like, as uh, there's Miki Hanada, Ketsu. Toshi Niyama, Niyama, rather, as far as the UWFI feller. Uh, Ice Train, 135. Nobuhika, Nobuki, uh, rather, Kakuta. Samu, 136. And uh, I think, oh, there's uh, Dave Taylor, Tom Sink, Ricky Fuji, Scott Norton, and others. Say, we haven't seen it. any of our guys in a hot minute, but here's kind of the, the last batch of them. Uh, Mascarilla Sagrada, Abyss, Doug Williams, Curtis Hughes, Taka Michinoku, Rick Martel, oh my god, above average, Mike Sanders, <laughs> Debbie Malenko, Blue Panther, wow, Team Mel just not really using them a whole lot, uh, Dustin Rhodes at 153, Giant Warrior 154, Hiro Saito 155, uh, Hokuda Hadaka 157, Eligante is still performing at a high level, that's kind of wild, Miko Satamora 159, Teo Kia, 163. Fucking Jason Anderson. Crazy, he's a top WF guy. Ed Ferrara? What in the world? They have an Ed Ferrara fucking work? Huh. Uh, that, that is, uh, that is Sagrada now. George South still working. <laughs> Nigel McGinnis, 178. Winners. What a name. Uh, Bobby Fulton. 185, Kazuya Yamasaki, 184. Bull Nakano, way the fuck down here, 191. That is a disservice. Matt Bourne still getting ranked pretty high. Mitsuhiro uh, Matsunaga, of course. God, God love him. Working FMW and ring. Big Titan, of course, still in the WWF. Doing pretty well. Barry Wyndham, 199. Kato Kung Lee Jr. Uh, El Kanek, Dos Caras. Birdman, Willie Peters, Bob Kamen, another UWF guy, uh, David Finley, who we brought into UPW, uh, Kazayashi, one, uh, 210, of course, Prince Mako, Ric Flair, way down there at 219, yeah, we let his contract expire, so he's not even a part of uh, UPW anymore, and I thought WCW would sign him, I don't think they have, uh, so he's just unemployed right now, at, uh, you know, 53 years old, it's kind of... Kind of crazy to think that he would still be working pretty much after he was a GM, of course, and I think the Rumble match in 2002 kind of was like, oh, this guy can still fucking work at a high level. Let's have him, you know, be back and obviously part of Evolution. And that definitely, those mid-2000s uh, years, he was still, like, he wasn't, like, a, a disgrace being out there. 
kind of crazy. Yeah, Booker T, 226. Bill Goldberg, 224. These guys I was hoping would do very, very well for us. Has not been the case at all. Jerry Lynn, 222. Tracy Smothers, 231. Of course, WCW right now still. There's Cena. It was uh, his first year in the uh, in the save, and he's already ranked pretty high. Him and uh, Kurt Henning doing good stuff. Uh, him and Rokil at a 60. Yeah, he's already, like, incredibly good, <laughs> which is kind of crazy. Because, yeah, oh, yeah, he's, he's been two years in. I was thinking this was his debut year, but no, it's 2001. But, yeah, I mean, he, you know, Charisma's obviously there, star quality, of course, there. He's been, uh, to think he's jumped up so much... Just in that short bit of time. <laughs> Him and Glacier. What a what a match. At a 51 on a pre-show. To jump from that to this tag match. Where he's the... Oh, you know, it still gets outperformed by Martel and Henning. But he's, he's outperforming Kevin Nash. Which is not, not saying a whole lot. But that's kind of crazy. He's that high up. Van Amber is somehow 248. And he's working the WWF. That's pretty hilarious. There's uh, Coco Beware, Billy Kidman, of course, Billy Kid Kilman, for us, as far as part of the, the front end of uh, Len Sanity. Uh, Rocky Maivia, 265. It, you know, he's getting, he's finally to the point where he's still in the 60s. He's still getting outperformed by people, but it, it's just crazy. We've had him for fucking since he debuted in the, in the save, and he really hasn't gotten better. In ring wise, yeah, we've had him since '96, literally his entire run. But in it's kind of crazy to think that is like his entire run of like WWF to basically uh, leaving for Hollywood. Pretty much that same time period. Thirty years old, and he still is like not great in ring. Like, oh, geez, it's not really there. Obviously, the star quality and the acting and, and the charisma, that, that would all be there. I, it, it is definitely kind of more so him not really being booked in a right environment, probably. More so than anything. I'm sure if he worked somewhere where they actually kind of valued promos and shit, it definitely would have been better for him. But, I mean, he's still doing well. Him and Nathan Jones won a match <laughs> to, to a Hollywood's finest. Punk and rock. Yeah, punk out. Or, uh, Rock out performed. That was a bit of a abysmal matchup. Very funny. Now, uh, some of these guys, you know, obviously, they're the biggest stars in the world. Fucking Maven is 290. He won one match. My God, they used him 83 times. He's losing to Ed Ferrar by DQ and count out. Obviously, you know, coming off of Tough Enough, obviously, it's not like they could replicate <laughs> Tough Enough, but... That's, uh... That's kind of hilarious that he's being used so much. Yeah, because they even used him in 2001, just pretty much off the rip. Him and Hogan on Boss Band, which is just hilarious. <laughs> the Lodi. Art Bar, 291. Yeah, I think that about probably do. Alex right there, 308. Who's uh, number 500? Mizuki Indo. Alrighty. Oh, Juan Waterman made it. Hell yeah. Oh, there's James Storm. Al Snow. Yeah, there's got like, uh, Shinya Makabe made it. It's Chris Harris. Yeah, we still have guys, even up in the high 400s. Uh, yeah, I think I'll probably do it for that, because this video is already going to be pretty long. Of course, the uh, the Supermax Grand Prix itself uh, is 15 shows, right? It's um, 14 laps, and then the final show. Uh, the participants are as followed as for Group A. Cosmic Dragon Kings, Lynn Sanity, the Fantastics, and the World Class A-Holes. As, uh, you know, for Dragon Kid, Jerry Lynn, Tommy Rogers, and Dick Togo, they are the singles matchups. Also about Dragon, Super Astro, Super Crazy, and Waltman, Bobby and Jackie Fulton, and Jado and Ghetto are the tag teams of that group. And then for the trios, Golden King, Super Astro, and Ultimo Dragon against Jerry Lynn, Super Crazy Killman against all the Fantastics, and then all of World Class A-Holes. Uh, so Group A, you know, obviously, I think a lot of people probably penciled in the Cosmic Dragon Kings is probably the favorites to win that one. We'll see if they can do that as far as for them. Group B, uh, we have Kai and Tai, Los Pomano, the Pure Temple of Shigoku, and the newest member of the roster, the Spanish Assault Team, SAT, as uh, we'll talk about them 
once we obviously get through it all, but, you know, Brad Armstrong, Vampiro, Jensei Shinzaki, and Blitzkrieg are the singles matchups. Terry Boy and Najiri, Kai and Tai, Sikosas and Damian Los Pavano, Vegeta and Hadaka, Fizzy Pure Temple of Shigoku, and then uh, jo uh, Joel and Jose Maximo of the SATs are the tag team. And then Trios, Takamichi Doku, Yoshiro Najiri, and Brad Armstrong, La Parka, Anaru, and a Vampiro, Jensei Shinzaki, Kondor Shiga, and Sinshi, and then Amazing Red, and the Maximos of, of course, Joel and Jose Maximo as uh, the Spanish Assault Team. It is basically that. It's Blitzkrieg, the Maximos, and the Amazing Red. Uh, you know, as far as, I always, again, SATs, what a influential team they were, especially if you're independent wrestling in the kind of the early, mid-2000s. They kind of are like, if the... Motor City Machine Guns are the kind of fathers of tag team wrestling, modern day kind of tag team wrestling on like the independent, like kind of AEW type of style, uh, where guys are using combination moves on people and you know, moving at a high pace and you're kind of taking what like the Junior Voice style was at the time and like what Tori Mon and Dragon Gate were doing and bringing it to the United States with an American team. Uh, the SATs are the grandfathers of that. They could do it. To a degree, they were kind of the laid the foundation a little bit for what that type of style could look like. But obviously, the guns took it in a whole new direction. I think they just unfortunately are just more talented than them. Uh, you know, really the Maximos again. It's weird that they were the Spanish announced team and not Spanish assault team like that. If they, you've wanted to have the SATs, I, I just never understood the, the idea behind the announcing part. Like that just. Is it like it just made no sense to me? I don't know why. It's still been a thing that's kind of bugged because they were a hell of a trio with obviously Amazing Red. They would team with Brian XL sometimes, and they were um they were a fun team, fun team. It was just obvious at that time they just didn't really have anybody to kind of work with because Toymon guys weren't coming over the states then, and they were just a little too early. If Dragon Gate was bringing in foreigners earlier on than when they did, and because obviously by the time they, they were, the Maximos were not really getting booked as much, and they kind of fell out of kind of the main independent hub at that time, and uh, just new teams were coming in and performing at a higher level, uh, unfortunately for them, but they they would have been a hell of a little trio with uh, Amazing Red, and add Blitzkrieg to that. Obviously, Blitzkrieg, he's not Spanish. Uh, Blitzkrieg, he was like a guy from Washington, or uh, I, th I think he was either from Washington or from Oregon. Well, Northwest, we'll just, you know, just keep it there. Uh, but, of course, you know, got out of wrestling very, very soon. Because uh, he's just like, I'm going into fucking tech. <laughs> Fuck this shit. Uh, which, basically, I think he saw the, the writing on the wall, mainly. Was like, damn, WCW and ECW are out of business. It's going to be fucking tough to be an independent worker again. So, that was, you know, he just took his took his ball and ran home. <laughs> took, took the much easier on your body and uh, less taxing work of a to, from you know wrestler to tech guy uh, but group c legend super generation army tts in the fbi full-blooded italians finally we've brought them over from fmw to here uh basically the idea of the fbi you know what a fun undercard gimmick i always thought in ecw where you have an actual italian and nunzio uh, aka uh little guido but then having a bunch of other guys who are thinking they are Italian or pretending to be Italian or insisting they are Italian, but obviously are not, i.e. Tommy Rich, Tracy Smothers, uh, the fucking J.T. Smith. Love it. I absolutely loved it. And we're doing the same thing here. Now, we do have... Uh, so the Mamalukes are James and Tony Mamaluke, which is Nunzio and Tony Mamaluke. Hideki Ozaka, who is Hideki the Hoss, uh, Satoru Zako, who is, um, fuck, I forget what his gimmick name is now off the top of my head. But it's, um, because he's still in, uh, rehab, is that, that's why he's not a part of this, uh, team, but, um, I'm, I'm blanking on what it is. And then, former Hector Garza, now Gravedigger Garza, who's kind of like a hitman role, and it kind of has that, that, that mom nickname, the, uh, Decky of the Hoss, Gravedigger Garza, and, uh, I cannot believe I'm forgetting Sadora Saka's name. Actually, let's just bring it up. That's the FBI. Full-blooded Italians. 
is, oh, that's Salvatore, that's right, Salvatore Fly Guy Asako. Because uh, they just needed gimmicks, you know, a lot of these, obviously, with having such a ragtag bunch, everyone kind of needs to have their, their, their gimmick, you know, for Gravedigger Garza and for the Hoss, and that gives, like, a kind of the muscle, kind of the, uh, the big Sally Granciano role that uh, he played in the ECW group, and then uh, Salvatore Asako, uh, Fly Guy Asako. It's, um, uh, I, I figured we probably should have changed his last name to something more Italian, but at the same time, I felt like if we can change Satoru to Salvatore, at least that's more Italian anyway. So then Hideki, we just kept him as Hideki, which made him the hoss, though. So, a little bit of, um, keeping basically that tradition of what ECW did with having guys think they're Italian when they're most definitely not. It's a, it's a fun undercard act. Because we, we definitely could use it. And um, they make it a big splash. Debuting here in this um, Super uh, Max 64 Grand Prix. Much like uh, the Springer's Assault team. Uh, but at least they have Blitzkrieg, who's already debuted. But then the FBI, at least they have Hideki Osaka, who's obviously been around pretty much since the start. Um, but is uh, not at, at some of the, you know, a huge level. Same thing for Blitzkrieg, obviously, who just relatively started new. Just a year into his uh, Super Max 64 career. But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Group C and Group B you know, are, I think, they're probably some of the toughest ones to pick a winner. You know, as far as Group B, Kai and Tai and Los Mervano are very, very tough. Pure Temple and Shigoku, definitely a team to not underestimate. Uh, and, you know, we'll see how the Spanish Assault team do making their debuts. And for Group C, Legend and TTS are a very, very tough group to, uh, to fight over as far as your Group C. And plus, of course, uh, Super Generation Army with Kenamoto and Kikuchi involved they're gonna be a tough team and for group d final group three count the can-am super junior crew cash money inc they have now been turned from team to stable and lords of the deep rounding it out as three count will start off with ricky fuji as a singles guy owen hart representing can-am super junior crew aaron greedy for green o'grady of course crash holly uh we've brought him over as uh you know as far as cash money inc we needed people that obviously have like a money gimmick behind them and Aaron O'Grady I really his gimmick was like a leprechaun we're gonna kind of transition that a little bit and it not be like a fucking full-on leprechaun and more so of a uh more like a hustler a guy that's you know trying to get paper by any means necessary type of thing so Aaron O'Grady greedy for green uh, himself as um uh, as a singles guy for Cash Money Inc. And then Prince Mako for the Lords of the Deep Tag Teams. Shane Helms, Shannon Moore for three count. Lance Storm, Rob Van Dam for the Can-Am Super Junior Crew. Cash Money Inc. As far as Kid Cash and Easy Money. And the Lords of the Deep. Oda Kira, Kotokumi, and Grand 91. The trios. Ricky Fuji, Magnum Tokyo, and Alex Wright. Brian Dillman, Lance Storm, and Owen Hart. So kind of much like the Stampede team, if you will. Because all those guys obviously trained uh, at, the, uh, at the dungeon. So kind of cool. And uh, Cash Money Inc.'s team. So it's not CZW's Chris Cash. It's Christian York, but we changed his last name to Cash with, you know, as far as... Because Chris Cash, obviously CZW guy, uh, he would have both S's and Chris and Cash be a money sign. But this, to, at least to differentiate the two, we're just going to have Cash, the, uh, the last name part of it, be with a money sign. And then Kid Cash and Easy Money... And for the Lords of the Deep, Super Delphin, Lord of Kira Kurokumi, and Pacificus. As, uh, you know, obviously, the k and Super Junior crew and the Lords of the Deep are kind of more the established team. Three Count's been around for a little bit now, so they're getting their, their feet wet to this, and they're not strangers to it anymore. But obviously, Cash Money, Inc. making their debuts in this Grand Prix. Looking to make a big splash. You know, we're having three groups debut. Unfortunately for the Radical Revolution, not involved in this tournament because uh, the injury to both Dean Malenko and Chavo Guerrero Jr., they don't have enough people to make it work. So no Radical Revolution for the first time. I think their absence is going to be missed for sure. Uh, there's going to be some cards that are going to be pretty abysmal to start off with. And we're going to have to hope that the rest of the card gets saved. Uh, especially, I would say... Probably the, the one that I think strikes me the most that's going to be tough is any Group A singles matches. Because you have Dragon Kid, Jerry Lynn, Tommy Rogers, and Dick Togo, and they're kind of always, you know, kind of 
tilting that line between recognizable and unimportant. So when those singles matches are going to take place, it's probably going to be a shit show. Uh, but the rest of them should work out pretty well. Uh, the Aaron O'Grady, Prince Mako, and Aaron O'Grady, Ricky Fuji might match might not go over so well. Same thing for Hideki, the Hoss, and Mara Fuji. But other than that, we should be ready to go. Uh, we already got everything ready to go lined up as far as show-wise. Um, we do have a title matchup that's happening on the final show. Kyoshi Demora, who is, of course, a part of this Grand Prix. He is taking on Eddie Guerrero, though, for the heavyweight title. Uh, Eddie, as far as, of course, had his win back, uh, as far as him and Kyoshi Demora. They uh, had, as far as, we go back to 2002. We saw, as far as Eddie Guerrero, he had a match with uh, Kyoshi Demora at Superversary. Demora won the junior heavyweight title. Eddie will be invoking his rematch clause here and be able to challenge back for the belt. So that's why that's taking place. So that will, uh, as far as that is the next future title contender for Kyoshi Tamora, but also he's got to keep his head out there on a swivel. So a lot of you are going to be eyeing him during these trios matches. Uh, that is for sure. As I have got to go over to Super Max or UJPW for a bit, because yeah, the New Year Giant Series tour is underway, of course, over there. As uh, the kicking off the year 2003, we've got some pretty big matches Shinzaki Vampiro, Brett Armstrong, Blitzkrieg, the singles matches, TTS versus Super Generation Army, and Ultimo Dragon and Super Astro versus the Fantastics, as well as Waltman and Super Crazy against the Aura Class tag team. Uh, so TTS and Super Generation Army is probably going to be the main event. But, I mean, Brad Armstrong and Blitzkrieg is, is a, you know, because Brad Armstrong is going to do really, really well. Also, Shinzaki and Vampiro probably will be a co-main. Instead, but Skyda left in the locker room and he uh, organized a, a, you know, he had a silly game that he created. become very popular backstage. As our main event, of course, TTS, Super Generation Army, the trios matchup, of course, Trios matches three points for each uh, group here. So Tamora gets the win for TTS over the Super Generation Army. So that's three points and a win for the champion. So Shinzaki and Vampiro. Ah, uh, damn, it's a TTS match. Or it's a technical best class match, or rather. And Shinzaki is going to beat Vampiro. So that might mean we have the Fantastic as an Ultimo Dragon and Super Astro as the co main. Yeah, and Super Astro is going to beat Bobby Fulton. So that's two points for them. Shinzaki beating Vampiro, though, is, is a big matchup. And then Brad Armstrong and Blitzkrieg, I'm assuming this is the Steelers Show matchup. Yeah, that's Brad's going to beat him. It's a big match for uh, Blitzkrieg to take on somebody like Brad Armstrong, a veteran who has been there and done that and has been a, at the top of his game for a long, long time. And our second tag matchup of the Grand Prix matchup is the world-class tag team taking on Sean Waltman and Super Crazy's ghetto is going to beat Super Crazy. So Waltman can't even work a 10-minute tag match. Pretty brutal. I think we're going to have that follow the opening matchup, and then hopefully Brad Armstrong Blitzkrieg kind of save it, and we'll go on from there. Uh, as far as, um, yeah, I mean, just comparing of what kind of the normal schedule is, we pretty much kept that same rhythm. Two tags, two singles, and a trios match. Just seems like that's the best way of going about it. We did see last year that the first ever matchup of 2002 was a bit of a shit show with Ken Kenna Moore and Alex Wright, but I think, uh, I think we're going to be off to a much better start, obviously, with Shinzaki and Vampiro. We uh, have to pick a venue, though. I do want to do that. Yeah, yeah we'll run... Uh, yeah, we'll run Osaka Hall. It, it's weird that we have the same fucking places for some of the arenas and venues, but it just kind of is what it is, unfortunately for us. But 85 for Vampiro and Jinsei Shinzaki. What an upset win for Shinzaki. With the Koyo Tashi in 1937 beating. Vampiro there got the show off to strong start. Jado and Ghetto beating the Sean Waltman Super Crazy team. Jado with a 72 and 61 for Ghetto. They did well. Uh, clear sweep as well. Beat them both in 10 minutes. Or beating Super Crazy than Sean Waltman. I mean, they had the excellent chemistry, Waltman and Crazy. So at least they are... Not too terrible, but I think they were in a perfect spot here because, yeah, Brad Armstrong and Blitzkrieg, which they don't click, which sucks because that match would have been even better. A 73 and a 50, though, for this singles matchup. Not bad at all. 
Brad Armstrong gets a one point for the Kai and Tai team, beating Blitzkrieg as our co-main event, Ultima Dragon and Super Astro beating the Fantastics, as yeah, Jackie eliminated first, wow, they had Ultima Dragon get eliminated, probably in a clean sweep, or even having Super Astro, well, we had Super Astro win, so, yeah, probably had a clean sweep, but Bobby Fulton would have put up a hell of a fight, would have lasted like six, eight minutes by himself. So, as far as from that perspective, the main event, an 87 TTS in the Super Generation Army. As a, uh, so, we have Marfuji eliminated first, then Otani, then Kikuchi and Kanemoto. I like that a lot. Marfuji, the weak link, almost in the 50s, uh, but everybody else, obviously, high 70s and mid 80s. Good performance from them. And uh, you know, a decent little card, for all things considered. We had two 85s and an 87. Not a bad way to kick off the Grand Prix here in 2003. As we're gonna... Eh, we'll probably put over... Put over Vampiro. Put over... Eh, we already put over Dragon, so we put over Astro, and then... Uh, we'll put over Minoru Tanaka. Why not? Why not? I think that's gonna work out well. Actually, let's uh, put over Kyoshi Nomura. There we go. Night one in the books, on the night two, here we go. Alrighty, day two, as uh, we have, as far as the singles matches, Hideki Ozaka, the hoss, battling against the great Sasuke, Shinjiro Otani, and the Yamichi Marufuji. Uh, the trios match, I believe, is, yeah, it would be uh, Cash Money Inc. and the K-Name Super Junior Crew, so we'll see how Christian York does in his debut. Also, as far as I just realized, it says Hideki the Hoss. That is definitely Hakuda Daka. I don't know why it says that, but uh, that will be an easy fix. Backstage instance, as far as a couple of them. Lance Storm, I uh, lifted the locker room and organized them. Won a video game tournament. And so did Shinjiro Otani. Wow, just a bunch of fucking gamers back there in our locker room. As the NU492, I have no idea where we're going to run. If yeah, we're going to run the Sendai Gymnasium, it'd be severely under capacity. Oh, yeah, we could run Kyushu, I think. Yeah, we got uh, 15,000. Perfect. Yeah, we ran uh, night six here of the Junior Heavyweight Tag League. So as far as our main event, first of all, I want to change this. Yeah, there we go. Easy fix there. So, I, I think... Hozaka and Sasuke is the steal the show match, I think. Yeah, Sasuke is gonna win. Really, no surprise there. Tough loss for the FBI. And then Otani in Marfuji. That's probably the tactical masterclass match, but it is. And Otani's gonna win again. Really, no surprise. Then we're gonna go with Terry Boy and Tajiri against the SATs. Which, uh, the SATs are gonna get the win. This was a weird one because they're obviously making their debut. I wanted them to look pretty good. Uh, they're going to be Terry Boy here. I'm surprised Terry Boy did not complain about it, so shout out them. Um, I think that they're going to go over pretty well uh, with our style and how they kind of are going to perform. I think they're going to have excellent chemistry, and I think it's going to work out pretty well. I'm honestly feeling this should, this might have to be the main event. Damien and Sikosis against Hedaka and Fujita, which Damien and Sikosis are going to get the win for Los Pavano. So that's a huge win, because I have no idea how Cash Money Inc. is going to do against the Can-Am Super Junior Crew in this trios matchup. Owen Hart's going to get the win over Kid Cash, though, so a tough break for Cash Money, Inc. But I just feel like Seacoast is going to do better than everybody on that Canaan Super Junior Crew side. And uh, I think it's going to be a, a decent matchup. I just don't think it's going to be better than that tag match. So as far as we're going to see, three points for the Canaan Super Junior Crew, two points for Los Bavano and the uh, SAT, team, and then uh, one point for Legend and TTS. This is uh, yeah, already two nights in, though. I think it's going to be, um, the first night's definitely going to be better than this one. We'll see, though. That was 70 for the opener. Otani gets in with the Cobra Clutch, so that's a good start. And then Hideki Ozaka and uh, the Great Sasuke as the Hoss losing here. Ah, they don't click. Tough break. Thunder Fire Powerbomb, though, gets the win for Sasuke. The 41. Oof, yep. Not enough popularity here, unfortunately. To Jerry, though, with a 58, best guy in the matchup. Uh, he unfortunately had to lose to uh, Jose Maximo. Damn, they don't have any chemistry. I was hoping there would be a positive chemistry for him to help him out a little bit, but alas, not it. But a big win, nonetheless. A 74, 
for the co-main, the k and Super Junior Crew beating the Cash Money Inc. team. Boy, Chris Cash with 39, tough debut, but Kid Cash with a 61. Very impressive, impressive. plus he was off his game. So Kid Cash is ready, and uh, man, he is money already. So that's a great sign for him, and a great, uh, you know, as far as Cash Money Inc. is looking like it might be a pretty formidable group. We'll see how, uh, if uh, Chris Cash can approve or anything, but man... Uh, debut with a 39 isn't terrible. It's not great, but, like, you look at an easy money already. He's in the 40s, mid-40s, almost in the 50s. So, if he could kind of rise like he can, they would just be fine. As Los Pavano beating Hidaka and Fujita. As Akuta Hidaka eliminated first, then Minoru Fujita. I wouldn't have mind if Damien got eliminated here, but we'll take the two straight falls. A uh, good match, though, for Psychosis. Not so much maybe for everybody else. Uh, Damien did pretty well, 74. But, um, yeah, I mean, it... it it was better than that co-main. It was not a great idea to have this show be a normal show, as lost popularity in 27 regions. So yeah, we knew it wasn't going to be good, but I figured at least I would get an 80. And uh, boy, boy oh boy, uh, tough one. Tough one here. So yeah, I, I definitely want to put over Cicosis. Uh Yeah, give Kid Cash a hug. Big day for him. And uh, I guess Otani bit of a, not a, a long list on people to, to really push up, but yeah, that tag match in the middle really fucked us, really, really fucked us, I thought the jury had a uh, good enough popularity for it, guess he didn't, so that's just the way she goes, on the night three, we go, alrighty, night three, as uh, we have our singles matchups, Prince Mako and Aaron O'Grady, so that matchup is probably going to start us off. I don't know, though. It might be the Steal the Show matchup, which is going to be weird because it's not going to steal the show. Uh, they're both, it, you know, them not over enough. It's really going to fuck us there. But, um, I mean, I guess we could have it be the pre-show, but th I feel like that'd just be kind of cheating, to be honest. Uh, Cosmo Dragon Kings and the War Class A also. The trios matchup, that's that's definitely the main. Um, Co-main event, TTS. Kikuchi and Kanemoto, that's going to be a good little matchup. As, uh, I, I think, um, it's gonna be a much better show than the last show. But, I still don't think it's gonna be phenomenal, though, in the same breath. But this is gonna be a really good trios match, though. Uh, they're gonna get the win, the, uh, Cosmic Dragon Kings. That's a big three points for them. The War Class A-Holes, though, I mean, they... John and Ghetto are getting a lot better. Unfortunately, Dick Togo really isn't. Uh, let's give him a little bit more time, though. In about 25 minutes, why not? Those guys deserve it. Those guys are gonna have a great matchup. For this night. Uh, 24 minute matchup though for TTS and Kikuchi and Kanemoto. Which a big win for Kikuchi and Kanemoto. Beating the Junior Void Tag Team Champions. Obviously this will now mean potentially. Uh, depending on how it all plays out. They'll either get a title matchup at the Grand Prix. Or probably not the Grand Prix though. Because obviously the Junior Void Tag League winners are, are probably going to get that shot first. But uh, if not the Super Hard Stopper show. So, just a future title matchup either way for them. El Samurai and Jushin Liger against the Mama Lukes as uh, El Samurai and Jushin Liger get the win as James Mama Luke losing there to El Samurai. Owen Hart, Ricky Fuji. Good little matchup here. Tactical Master Class, yep. So, it is the Tactical Master Class matchup. 18 minute matchup. Owen Hart's going to get the win. Which will mean Aaron O'Grady and Prince Mako are going to steal the show. And Mako is furious by that i'm i can see why but again aaron o'grady's making his debut sometimes you gotta have a guy make a big debut win and i think this is definitely the case in needing that win here would be massive for him and let's say we can run shubu yeah looks like we're going to the rainbow hall would probably be our best bet there the sellout crowd here for night three. A 75, though, for Owen Hart and Ricky Fuji. That's a great little opener. Owen Hart gets the win with a sharpshooter in 1818. I guess we could have gave him a little bit more time, but yeah, got, got the show off to a strong start and immediately gets killed by the next matchup. Prince Mako losing to the Irish Kenrana uh, over uh, Prince Mako there. Yeah, I mean, we I forgot to edit his move set because I didn't even think that they would have their Irish Kenrana, but. Yeah, uh, we'll definitely be changing that. I'm not sure what we'll have his finisher be. 
Oh, maybe the Benjamin Buster. Because yeah, he used to do that kind of Styles Clash. They used to call it the Crash Landing. So I think we'll probably do that. that that's probably the call. There's an 80 for uh, El Samurai and Jushin Liger against the Mamelukes. Tony and James Mamelukes being eliminated, obviously. But uh, listen, I mean, uh, you know, Nunzio, not bad. Not bad at all for him as far as a 53. And he was really off his game. Not a bad debut at all. Uh, but uh, El Samurai and Liger getting the win with Liger with a 90. Great stuff from him. Definitely the heavy lifter of that one. Wow. Uh, there's a TTS in Kikuchi and Kanemoto. Yeah, probably we should have had that go on last, especially with the Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Champions losing to Kikuchi Kanemoto. Great matchup, though, for Funaki and Tanaka. 96 and 88 and 90 for Kanemoto. Just Kikuchi bringing the match down a little bit, but uh, it's a hell of a matchup, though. And what a win for the Grand Prix uh, for Kikuchi and Kenamoto and for the Super Generation Army, what, uh, man, it came down to, uh, as far as Kenamoto and Funaki, great, just perfect, exactly what we wanted, 85 of the main event, it's Cosmic Dragon Kings beating the World Class A-Holes here, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Dick Togo, way below everybody else, John Ghetto a couple of points behind, you know, about 10 points or so behind Golden King, and obviously the heavy lifters being, uh, Astro and Dragon, which, Super Astro, best guy in the match. Pretty impressive for a guy that's in his uh, early 40s, mid-40s at this point. Pretty impressive performance from him, but yeah, wrong thing went on last. Definitely should have went with this, I don't know what I was thinking, but it was a good matchup, though. Both the main and the co-main, just yeah, <laughs> the match we knew was going to suck. Unfortunately, it did. Uh, definitely want to put over Prince Mako, give him a, a big hug. It's like, hey, th thanks, for the, thanks for doing that, brother. We needed that. Uh, tr 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 trying to think. Oh, uh, yeah, let's put over in Mama Luke. And then uh, Funaki, man. I mean, he, he was phenomenal. Did great. You will also give him a uh, welcome. Welcome aboard. There we go. At night three, in the books. On to a night four we go. We'll probably look at the standings not until we, uh, real, we at least hit double digits. So it's going to be a hot minute we look at the standings but a lot of big wins already obviously each show has had a trios matchup so each group potentially has three points and uh yeah we'll we'll see how it all keeps playing out so far it's went pretty much as expected some of the undercard matches haven't been delivering because of uh, popularity but it's uh at least we're having some pretty good mains and co-mains besides night two unfortunately but i think we're we're on the right track though all righty night four as, uh, yeah, Dragon Kid, Jerry Lynn, Tommy Rogers, Dick Togo, this is the night, yeah, unfortunately, where we know it's not gonna be the greatest, and boy, I mean, it's not a whole lot that's gonna save this card, um, that Lords of the Deep Cash Money Inc. matchup actually should be pretty good, that's probably gonna be the co-main, main event's probably gonna be this, most Pavano on the Pure Temple of Shigoku, and then, uh, k &M Junior Express 3 count, it's gonna be pretty prominent on the card, but yeah, that opening matchup, and, Probably, well, this might not be the opener. It might be Rogers and Togo is the opener, then Dragon Kid and Jerry Lynn will steal the show matchup, which they're going to perform well. It's just, again, just popularity. They're not over enough, uh, unfortunately for us. So, um, yeah, we'll just go ahead. Yeah, we'll probably go with the main event first. That's always smarter. Just to add it, as uh, Jensei Shinzaki going to get the win for the Pure Temple of Shigoku. So, a big win over the Los Papano Trio team. This is definitely going to be carried by Shinzaki and Vampiro, uh, as far as, uh, from that perspective, Cash Money, Inc., and the Lords of the Deep, next matchup, Steal the Show matchup, wow, so this is the Steal the Show match, I don't know about all this, we'll leave it for now, but I don't know, I don't think that's the right call, the Canyon Junior Express against three count, this is the technical master class, so I see what I see, I see. So Landstorm, going to get the win here over three counts. So these matches, because I know they're going to be bad, because of popularity, we didn't even put them as a steal the show. Oh, I guess we did. That's weird. Yeah, let's have that be the steal the show matchup, I guess. Dick Togo and Tommy Rogers. Togo's going to win. Then Dragon Kid and Jerry Lynn. It's Dragon Kid. Be getting the win. Um. Yeah, I mean... Ah, fuck. Yeah, we'll, we'll have this be a regular match. We'll stick with what we got. Because I, I just know that this is... But it's weird, because Dragon Kid is just right on that cusp. 
But again, so was I thought the Jerry was going to be safe, but I just, I don't know. I think this is probably the right call. Unfortunately, they don't have the lineup like this. As uh, we definitely will not be running Kanto. Uh, whoever has the smallest venue that we can run is probably where we're going to go to. Yeah. Sendai Gymnasium it is for this night. Let's run it. Yeah, 42. Dick Togo, though, with a 56. Gets one of the Diving Zenton in 10-16. So that cooled the crowd. This match, if they don't click, so it even was worse than anticipated. We got those matches out of the way. Dragon Kid, though, and Dick Togo, at least, were in the 50s. Dragon Kid would have probably been in the 60s, if not for an awkward bout. That's just great. Now, because the opener sucked, this sucks. As uh, the Canadian Junior Express beats three count. Good win for Storm and Van Dam. As, uh, wow, they, and it was Van Dam losing as well. Probably would have been a clean sweep, but I get it. There we go. Steal the show matchup. Kid Cash, Naniwa, Lord Akira Kotokumi, and Easy Money. Here's Easy Money eliminated first, then Naniwa, and then Kid Cash. I actually like that. I think that's the right call. Because Kid Cash is, is rolling a little bit for somebody that is not over, like, at all. So that's a great sign for him. And a 77 for our main event. So yeah, this show's going to get another loss of popularity for this tour. So we're two for two so far. But yeah, since she eliminated first in Anru, then La Parka, then Katoshiga, then finally uh, Vampir, who of course was the best guy in the match. Uh, La Parka being the third best guy in the matchup shows you how terrible that match went. Just great. Just, just great. Boy, I mean, what to put over. I mean... First of all, we get a big hug to Vampiro for being on this show. Not for him. I don't think anybody would have been even close to a 90. Uh, I guess we'll put over a Lance Storm. And uh, I guess I, we'll put over Lord Akira Kotokumi. Bit of an abysmal show that was. We knew it, though. We knew that group was going to have troubles singles-wise. And it most certainly did. Most certainly did. But luckily, that's in the past. I think there's going to be more better shows, and there's going to be... The, the good's going to outweigh the bad, is kind of what I'm hoping for, at least. We'll see, though. I could be completely wrong, and it'd be an abysmal tour, but... So far, or at least 50-50. We'll see how uh, Night 6 plays out. Alrighty, Night 5, as uh, we... Probably, again, will not be running Kanto, but uh, this is a hell of a show, though, as far as... Uh, especially compared to some of the other ones, with... Uh, Blitzkrieg, Jinsei Shinzaki, and Vampira and Brad Armstrong, which is... That Vampiro Brad Armstrong match, we might have that be the main event, because that's going to be a hell of a matchup, but i assuming it's going to be the Technical Masterclass matchup. We'll see, though. As far as uh, the backstage instance for this show, got a couple of them. Ted Tanabe uh, created a fun and relaxed atmosphere backstage after finding a discarded karaoke machine and starting an impromptu pre-show competition. His melodies of power ballads apparently stole the show. Yuki Sano, Breath of Rest's court, accused the family to pick up a share of the tab at the bar, as the judge, Kiyoshi Damora, found them guilty and sent them to buy drinks after the show. Oh, Brad Armstrong took uh, one of the Maximos, Jose, under his wing. What a get for them. As the... I, again, you know, the, I think this is going to be the opening matchup, but in case it's not... Okay, perfect. So yeah, this we'll have this be the main. Vampira, Brad Armstrong, a singles contest. Vampira getting the win, so that's one point for Los Bravano. Shinsei, Shinzaki, and Blitzkrieg is probably the steal of the show. It is. As far as Shinzaki getting the win, really no surprise there. Fantastics versus the World Class Tag Team. This the Tactical Masterclass matchup. Which the Fantastics are going to get the win, so that's a big two points for them. Is the FBI versus Legend in a trios matchup. Two Gold Scorp is going to be beating Grave Digger Garza. Tough break for the FBI. I think we'll put that there. And, uh, I don't think this will be the co-main, but it, it might be, though. I don't know, because it's only going to be a nine-minute matchup, unfortunately, because of, um, Waltman's, uh, terrible stamina. As, uh, yeah, we'll make sure it's a Grand Prix match. Uh, yeah, I mean, nine minutes, Sean Waltman being the last guy eliminated. Yeah, I'm about to say, we have to at least make it 15 might as well. There. Uh, I just want to double check. Make sure all these are Grand Prix matches. They usually are. But that's just in case. Yep. Alrighty. We should be good to go. As far as after we pick our venue here. I say uh, Hokuto's not a bad option. And yeah, we can run. 
the uh, Sapporo Ice Arena, or we can run the stadium. Yeah, we'll just run the stadium. Mako Manai Stadium. Alrighty. Here for night five. We start off with a 73. Uh, Bobby Fulton did really well here. 78. Ghetto eliminated first, and Bobby Fulton did then. Jado probably shouldn't have a Jackie Fulton be involved in the match for so long, but it is what it is. And him being the final fall, too. Uh, beating Jado. But a uh, good matchup, though. Honestly, a good matchup, especially for what we needed out of that. We'll, we'll gladly take that. As uh, Jinsei Shinzaki beating Blitzkrieg. Blitzkrieg's almost in the 50s, though. He's just looking at a positive side for him. An 82 for the FBI versus Legend. That actually did pretty well. Uh, Garza... With a 61, fucking Nunzio's in the 50s already. Tony Mamaluke, 41. Good shit, yeah, as far as, um, it was a clean sweep for the legend, unfortunately for them. I think that probably is the right call, but maybe could have Garza beat Scorpio, but then again, Scorpio gets the win, so we were kind of torn there. It's a good matchup, though. And 85, yeah, I'm glad this was the co-main. Sean Waltman and Super Crazy losing to Super Astro and Ultimate Dragon. As uh, Sean Woman eliminated first, then Super Astro, and then Super Crazy. Yeah, this would have been a clean sweep. Wouldn't have been back and forth like that, especially in that 10-minute matchup. But, uh, it was a good match, though. Especially for the uh, Ultimate Dragon Super Astro team at a 92 for our main event. As yeah, Brad Armstrong, he is dealing with an injury, and he still does pretty well here. As he beats, or rather, he loses... Uh, to Vampiro to the nail in the coffin in 26-25. A hell of a show, especially after having some of the shows we've had already. Uh, some of them have been pretty, pretty brutal. But yeah, we'll put over Vampiro and Brad Armstrong. And, um, uh, trying to think. Yeah, I mean, I guess we can go Super Astro or even uh, Ultimo Dragon. We'll probably go Astro. And there's Night 5 on a Night 6. We go. Alrighty, Night 6. As, uh, for this night, though, that, you know, it's got Sasuke and Otani, but of course has the Hideki the Hoss and Marfuji match, so we know that's not gonna go over too well, uh, unfortunately for us. As, uh, we do have a backstage in a sense, Tommy Rogers. He gave the locker room a lift and provided a crate of free drinks for everyone. Way to go. Tommy Rogers, you fucking brilliant man. So we'll go ahead and just add this first. It might be a Steel Show matchup, though, unfortunately. Yeah, it is. God damn it. Marfuji, though, is going to get the win over Hozaka. As he is extremely unhappy about that. So now i got to figure out what's the technical masterclass matchup. Because I don't think it's this. Hideki, uh, Mokuro Adaka, and Minoru Fujita in the SATs. Yeah, as Fujita's going to get the win there in 10 minutes. Um. Yeah, that one, uh, you know, as far as... Yeah, it's tough. It's tough, because I think this would probably make more sense to be a Steel of the Show matchup, actually. So, yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. Have that be the regular match. Yeah. I like that a little bit more. And that way, whenever we find the Tactical Masterclass matchup, which, again, it might be Sasuke and Otani. It might be. I'm glad it's not, though, because... We'll have that be the main event, as Otani will be beating the Great Sasuke. What a win for Otani there. Damn. Is it the Lords of the Deep in three count? Is that the Tactical Master Class matchup? No. As uh, it's a Chios match, and Lord Okir Kurokumi will be getting the win in that one. So that will mean that Terry Boy and Tajiri against Los Pavano is, in fact, the Technical Master Class matchup. And I believe Los Pavano will be getting the win, yes. As, uh, wow, 12 minute technical masterclass matchup? I don't think so. Look at that 16 minutes is, uh, Psychosis and Damien will be getting the win. Boy, so we know these first two matches are gonna take a nosedive into shit. We just gotta kinda recover and hopefully have a pretty good show. Especially with that main event, I think it's gonna save it. We'll see though, but yeah, we'll run the Hiroshima Gymnasium. 10,000 people. Nice, nice crowd uh, for, unfortunately, this bit of a bummer show. Yeah, as uh, Triangle Cobra Clutch there from Naomichi Marfuji. Getting the win on 1140. Uh, a couple point difference. You know, four point difference. So it's not too terrible, at least for the ratings. But as far as the match itself, obviously, not great. 
And then 67 here. For the tactical masterclass matchup is Damien and Seiko. So speech to Jerry and Terry Boy. Yeah, clean sweep there for Los Bravano as well. No surprise. And a 57 for the Steal the Show matchup. As uh, Jose and Joel Maximo losing to Ukuda, Adaka, Minoru, Fujita. At least Minoru, Fujita, and Adaka did well. But yeah, I mean... Uh, Joel, with a 41, he was really off his game, so it could have been a little better, but... I guess we'll take a 57, for all things considered, for how badly this show has went. Now we have a bruised eye socket for Alex Wright. Pacific is still rusty, so that's just great. Just a brutal show this has been. Going into the main event, and of course, lack of psychology, so it gets capped at an 80. Otani... Beat Sasuke with the Cobra Clutch. So a big point for TTS, but overall, boy, another show that's a swing and a miss. That fucking this technical masterclass match was the second best thing on the card. So that was that was great. Man. Man oh man. Probably would have been smarter to flip these two had this be the technical masterclass match because Akira Kotokumi and Super Delphi are pretty good technically. Pacific is not so much, but we he was already rusty, so he's not going to do well for... He's not going to be, you know, tremendous at it. Yeah, but either way, we were doomed. <laughs> we, we knew it, going into it. Just couldn't pay it off, and unfortunately for us. Yeah, we'll put over Sasuke and Otani and Hideki the Hoss, so that way he's not too upset with us. Not a great show. <laughs> not, a, not a great show. Again, we just can't find... The kind of metal ground that we need. It's either really good or really bad, it seems like, for these shows. Pretty brutal. As on to the next night, we go. Alrighty, as uh, for night seven, basically this is pretty much the halfway point. Uh, as far as we're getting into seven and eight is, is about the halfway point of the Grand Prix. And as far as for this show, uh, we have with, uh, you know, Koji Kanemoto. And Siyoshi Kuchi. It's a Mama Luke's Lens Lee versus the Fantastics. That's the trios match. Uh, we have Ricky Fuji and Aaron O'Grady and Owen Hart and Prince Mako, which are actually decent little um, singles matches. Probably the main event that will be TTS against El Samurai and Jushin Liger, though. I would say that's a given, uh, given the lineup. As uh, Lance Storm gave the locker room a left wing and failed a series of spot on impressions on most colleagues. How about that? As the. Yeah, well, we'll go ahead and just add the main now. 28 minutes. Minoru Tanaka is going to get the win over El Samurai, so a win for the Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Champions there. Uh, Kikuchi and Kenamoto against the Mama Lukes, we'll, we'll add that here. 12 minutes, as uh, Kikuchi is going to get the win, yeah, I, I just feel like, because I think this is the Tactical Masterclass matchup, and this is the other show matchup. Uh, but the Fantastics and Insanity, it might be a decent little matchup, uh, all things considered, but again, 13 minutes, not a lot of time here, but Bobby Fulton's going to get the win for the Fantastics. Over Lynn Sandy with Jerry Lynn being the last guy. Yeah, this is the technical masterclass matchup. Is Owen Hart's going to beat Prince Mako? So that's one point. The k Super of Junior Crew. And Ricky Fuji's going to beat Aaron O'Grady. The greedy for green man is going to fall short there. And uh, that will be a uh, one point win for three count. As far as, again, the venue, I still don't want to run Kanto. We're getting very, very short on kind of resources to be able to not run Kanto, but yeah, let's see, because I'll, I'll run a 5,000 seater, like, I don't, I don't give a shit, there we go, that'll work for us, all right, yeah, let's run the show, at 80, or 73, rather, excuse me, is that 81 for Owen Hart, though, he did great, Prince Michael, not so much, but the big one for Owen there with the sharpshooter in 18 minutes, 62 for Ricky Fuji, and Aaron O'Grady, as yeah, Ricky Fuji basically doubled him. Nice win for him. It's a 68 for the trios matchup. Linsanity falling short to the Fantastics. It came down to one-on-one. -on -one. I love that a lot, even though it's like a 13-minute match. These guys are getting eliminated left and right. Uh, Puppet Fulton with a 77. Jerry Lynn, though, with a 61. Uh, Killman with a 55. 53 for Super Crazy. Not a bad matchup, really. All things considered. 81 for Kikuchi and Kanemoto against the Mamelukes. As, uh, wow, it would have been a clean sweep, not Kochi Kanemoto losing there, but I get it, though. And, of course, that's a 12-minute matchup. An 88, though, for our main event, TTS beating 
uh, El Samurai and Jushin Liger's Minoru Special for Minoru Tanaka getting the win. 90s for both Funaki and Liger. And uh, just a point difference in the rating here. Thanks to Minoru Tanaka being really off his game. At least we're going to have a pretty good show. Yeah, thanks to that main event. And the co-main event actually did pretty well. There we go. As a uh, actual successful show. How about that? And so, uh, I'm trying to think. Yeah, we'll put over... Put over Kanemoto. Actually, uh, let's put over Siyoshikuchi. Put over... Um, t -t 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 -t. Let's go Funaki, of course. And, uh... Let's go Owen. He did great in that, his opening matchup. So that's night seven in the books. On the night eight we go. Before you know it, we'll be taking a look at the standings to see how all the teams are, are playing out so far. Uh, as far as uh, it's... It, it, there's so much going on that, you know, there's so many different variables with the, the three points, the two points, the one point. A lot going on. But, uh, the, I mean, those trios matches, they're huge. The, that three points can swing you into the title matchup, or into the uh, Supermax Grand Prix matchup, or we'll be uh, sitting outside looking in and being a uh, the fourth team. So as far as it is, uh, very much a make or break time, this last kind of stretch of, of shows. We'll see how it all plays out. Alrighty, as night eight. Again, we are going to try to stay out of Kanto as long as we can, but it's getting tougher and tougher as each day passes. Uh, but this show... The Lords of the Deep, Can-Am Jr. Express matchup, that's probably going to be the main event. Because again, Dick Togo, Dragon Kid, Jerry Lynn, Diamond Rogers, both those matches, going to be a big swing and a miss. The three-count Cash Money Inc. match might even be a big swing and a miss. Uh, as far as the Spanish Assault Team and Kai and Tai as well, that um, is going to be the trios match. So that's going to be interesting. Brad Armstrong is going to make that match work, uh, but and, uh, and Taka's going to do pretty well too, but I don't know about the rest of the guys in that matchup. It's, um, it's going to be a little shaky. A little shaky. Obviously, we know that with those singles matches, but let's see here. When, uh, so, we ran night one in Kansai, which I think we could still run uh, Osaka Joe Hall. Yeah, I mean, it's basically going to be a sellout. A little under capacity, but we'll make it work. This Lords of the Deep, Canyon Jr. Express matchup, it's got to be the main event. And what a win for Rob Van Dam and Lance Storm. They're going to beat the former, uh, as far as I believe they've been, what, two-time Junior Void Tag Team Champions? It's off the top of my head, I, I know it's been once, but I, I thought it was maybe another time. Nope, just the one time, but that's a big win. It's a big win for a team that has really worked hard in improving year in and year out. Spanish Assault Team, Kai and Tai, the trios match here as Taka Benchidoku is going to get the win for Kai and Tai. Over the Spanish Assault Team. Three count versus Cash Money Inc. Can go here now as uh, the uh, three count Cash Money Inc. matchup. It's going to be 18 minutes. Don't think it's going to matter though, unfortunately, because of popularity and whatnot. But Kid Cash and Easy Money are going to get the win. It's Kid Cash, though. He's been doing really well in this tournament. So it's, uh, it's going to be impressive to see how he does in that matchup. Dick Togo and Dragon Kid. I'm assuming this is the Steelers Show matchup. It is. Dick Togo also going to beat Dragon Kid. What a win. And then Tommy Rogers and Jerry Lynn. The Tactical Master Class matchup with Jerry Lynn picking up the victory. Just unfortunate that I just know popularity-wise it's not going to matter for those first, like, three matches. We're going to need Kai and Tai to kind of save the show and then knock it out of the park here for our main event with the Lords of the Deep and the KDM Junior Express. And, yeah, 37. Jerry Lynn and Tommy Rogers, even though they have pretty good chemistry, just a swing and a goddamn mess. Uh, you know, as far as Tommy Rogers is, is stale, which... I mean, you know, as far as Tommy Rogers doesn't really have like a gimmick or anything, so we'll probably just have to drop his gimmick and uh, and cut our losses. But yeah, Jerry Lynn at least had a 54 to at least look at something positive. But yeah, bit of a brutal matchup. Dragon Kid and Dick Togo though did pretty well as again 61, 54. But again, not enough popularity. It's the 49 there with uh, Dick Togo getting on with a diving senton. Big win though for uh, the World Class Aels there. And then Shannon Moore bruises the pectoral muscle in this tag matchup. Cooled the crowd even more. Uh, but Kid Cash with a 62. Uh, Shane Elms and Shannon Moore, 52-51. I'm assuming... I do like that Easy Money was eliminated first, too. A two-on-one comeback for Kid Cash to really put over how talented he is. Brutal. I don't know if the injury... I'm assuming the injury took away a lot of shit from that rating. Yeah. It could have been even better, obviously, but... Away she goes. That's the way... It fucking goes. A 69 for the go main event. Oh, boy. 
as uh, the Maximo is going to limit it then to Jerry, then Amazing Red as Kai and Ty picking up the victory. Yeah, I mean, Talk and Brad Armstrong did pretty much the same thanks to Brad's injury. Amazing Red with a 50, and he was really off his games. So that's actually pretty impressive for him. Tajir with a 62. He's getting better as well. Hopefully our main event's in the 80s. All right, 83. We'll gladly take that. Thank God. As uh, you had, you know, Team Great Kimsey, a team with uh, Tag Team Specialist bonus. It, it just kind of all works out. A couple point difference, too. It's not a uh, crazy upset. It's a believable upset for sure. 91 eliminated, then Lance Storm, and then Lord Akira Kotakumi with Rob Van Dam picking up the win. Yep, still. Lost some popularity. Holy shit. Uh, we, we, it just keeps on going back and forth. We'll have a good show, and then a bad show. It's a good show, bad show. We just can't buy a break, uh, unfortunately for us. Uh, but yeah, we'll put over Akira Kotakumi, Lance Storm, and. Uh, We'll go grand now anyway as well. We'll just do everybody in that main event. Besides Rob Fiat. Damn. They tried. Just couldn't get it done. As on to day nine, we go. Alrighty, uh, night nine before we get into the double digits. And uh, we're actually, after this show, we'll be just five shows away from the final. So it's uh, you know, kind of the f final five laps here of the Grand Prix. We're rounding it out. And as far as hopefully... Again, we can have a good show after our abysmal one at our previous one. But uh, by Brad Armstrong and uh, Jose Maximo, which of course he's, you know, his predator six passing on microphone work to him, and then Ultimate Dragon passing on selling tips to Magnum Tokyo. So our main event, um, you know, probably Jin Shinzaki, Brad Armstrong, that's always a good call, but it might be the Technical Masterclass. We'll have to wait and see. I'm assuming this would be the Technical Masterclass, though. The World Class Tag Team versus Ultimate Dragon and Super Astro. Either way... Whichever one isn't is the main event between those two matches. We'll just go ahead and pick Shinzaki and Brad Armstrong. Yep, that's the technical masterclass match, which Brad Armstrong's going to win. So that's one point for him. The world class tag team on Ultimo Dragon and Super Astro then is the main event. 23 minutes. Oh, let's give him a little bit more time here. Yeah, 28 minutes. It's Ultimo Dragon's going to get the win. What a showing, though, for the world class tag team, though, that to have a matchup with the Ultimo Dragon and Super Astro and going that long, you know, going, going the distance damn near with them. As uh, Waltman and Super Crazy versus the Fantastics. That's, uh, thank God Bobby Fulton's in this matchup. But Super Crazy's gonna get the win. So what a win for Lin Sanity here. Big two points for them. And I'm assuming then the Steal the Show matchup is Vampiro and Blitzkrieg. Which, that's a fun little Steal the Show match, actually. As uh, Blitzkrieg and Vampiro. Uh, as far as Vampiro are gonna get the win in 12 minutes. That's one point for Los Bravano. Then the co-main event, Super Generation Army versus the FBI, the full-blooded Italians. As Marfucci's going to get the win for the Super Generation Army team. As uh, he's going to beat uh, James Mamaluke at the end. I think we're actually going to have Grave Dicker Garza be the last guy. Yeah. There we go. So that's the co-main. I, I think it's going to be a good show. I definitely think it's going to be a much better show than what we saw previously. And yeah, still want to hold off the Kanto. Show. Definitely want to try and hold that off for as long as we can. But yeah, now we're going to go to day, to night two, rather. Yeah, that Marine Mies. B15,000, so again, a little under capacity of a full sellout, but we'll take it. As uh, night nine starts off with the 82, as Brad Armstrong gets the one to side rush and leg sweep over Jinsei Shinzaki. It's a big win for Brad Armstrong and for Kai and Tai. It's a 69 for Bobby Fulton and Jackie Fulton against the Linsanity team of Sean Waltman and Super Crazy. Jackie Fulton eliminated first, then Sean Waltman, and then Bobby Fulton. I probably would have had Super Crazy come back 2-1, but I'm cool with it going back and forth like that, though. It's no big deal. So the 69, though, for the matchup. And the 76 for the Steel the Show matchup is Vampiro with a 91. And you see that the singles Grand Prix for uh, Group B is already over. As it uh, looks like it's a three-way tie. Which is uh, pretty hilarious between Brad Armstrong, Vampiro, and Jinsei Shinzaki. As, uh, you know, Vampiro with the win. That's, uh, that's massive, though, for Los Bravano, Kai and Tai, and uh, the pure Temple of Shigoku. Because it, it's probably going to be a fight to the finish as far as who's winning that uh, Group B. Every point counts, especially for them. But that's a tough break, though, for the uh, Spanish Assault team, though, with Blitzkrieg being on the... Losing in a lot of these singles matches, but a lot of these guys, I mean, look, and you've got 
Two former champions, Brian Armstrong has fought many champions, has done very well for himself throughout the years. So Blitzkrieg had a tough, tough competition uh, group to, to go against. He fought valiantly, but still fell short in the end. As the trios matchup for Super Generation Army and the FBI, Tony Mamaluke eliminated first, then James Mamaluke, and then finally Gravedigger Garzo. So a clean sweep. As, yeah, Mar Fuji, 52, 58 for Garza and James Mamaluke, and of course, Coach Kenamoto, Seo 89, and 81. Yeah, it's Mamaluke, just way below everybody else, unfortunately. For him, and 89 for our main event. It's the World Class Tag Team losing here. And uh, it, it is Ghetto, then Astro, then Jado. So it came down to Dragon and Jado. Uh, what a win, though, for obviously Ultimate Dragon and Super Astro, and for that team with two points there. And it uh, looks like they are going to be the winners of Group A, at least for the tag team scene. A lot of happenings as far as when we'll be taking a look at the uh, the standings next time, as far as for the first time. here to, uh, We'll actually open up Night 10 by looking at the standings. I think that's going to be the best way of going about it. And then we'll probably look at it again, probably going into the last lap. So as far as uh, we'll be after Night 14, so the next time we'll probably see it. So yeah, as far as uh, on to night 10, here we go. Alrighty, as far as night 10, uh, before we get into the card, the standings are as follows going into this night. Castle Dragon Kings with 10 points, as uh, Lin Sanity with 3, Fantastics with 5, and the World Class Aeos with 4. So yeah, definitely uh, Castle Dragon Kings is a uh, group to lose. The Fantastics would need a bit of a miracle, because obviously the tag matches are done. They've already got three points off the trios. Really, if it comes down to it, is they're going to have to win out and have nine points there. And even then, they would have to hope that Dragon Kid doesn't get any more wins as well. as uh, that's And also, too, the Golden King, Super Astro, Ultimo, Dragon Trio not win any matches, too. So they still have a chance mathematically, but it, it's a long shot for sure. For Group B... Kai and Tai with 5 points, Los Pavano with 6, the Pure Temple of Chigoku with 7, and then the Spanish Assault Team with 2. It's obviously a very, very close race. Uh, a point each for, you know, the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd place team. That's going to come down to the wire, for sure. Those 3 points are massive in this group, as uh, La Parker, Anru, and Vampiro still 0 points. If um, the Spanish Assault Team can get even 3 points in, just like that, they are in contention. So that is massive for uh, for Group B, is the three points. For Group C, as uh, Legend with six, Super Generation Army with eight, TTS with seven, and the FBI with zero. So this is a three-team race for sure. The FBI don't have a chance in hell <laughs> as far as to win uh, this group. This is, uh, I mean, Legend, Super Generation Army, and TTS, some of the best groups we have. Especially with Kenamoto and Kikuchi as a tag team. They already got the three points off the trio matchup as well. It's uh, it's going to come down to, again, those three points. Uh, as far as the trio matches are what's going to make this group, who's ever going to make it out of this, the winner, will be those trio matches. As for Group D, three count with one point. K-Name Super Junior Crew with nine points. Cash Money Inc. with three points. And Lords of the Deep with five uh, again, the K&M Super Junior crew, they are kind of running away with this one, much like Group A is with Cosmic Dragon Kings. Uh, they have points in every bracket, you know, from Owen Hart to Lance Storm and, and Rob Van Dam to you know, Pillman and Owen Hart and Lance Storm. They are getting points in each category, and that is so huge. Uh, as far as, especially with Prince Mako with zero points, that's kind of what's holding back maybe the Lords of the Deep potentially, but again... A lot can still happen. Of Lords of the Deep, they get six points off the trios matches. Something might happen as far as they might be able to surpass Group D. But right now, if the tournament ended, it would come down to Concert Dragon Kings, Super Generation Army, and the KM Super Junior Crew. So that would be an interesting trios because that would have, uh, as far as Naomi Jamara Fuji in that trio matchup, of course, in the latter match. Same thing for Golden King. And uh, as far as also, you know, Brian Pillman and Owen Hart and Lance Storm being involved in that matchup as well, it would be interesting for sure, but still a little bit of uh, time left still. Not a lot of time, but there's still some big matches left. As for this night, we have the Hoss and Otani. We have Mara Fuji and the Great Sasuke. So as far as that's uh, going to be a point for TTS, and it's probably going to be a point for Legend as well, yeah, so we'll just go ahead and clock one 
on to uh, Sasuke, so we'll make that two. So now it's going to be seven points, and then eight points for TTS. So right now, depending on what happens, and Otani with three points. So that is massive. He swept everybody. And Los Provano, SATs. Which C. Kosas will be getting the win. In that one, we are going to make it 13 minutes. So that's two points for Los Bravano. And we'll go ahead and add six points there. So that's going to be eight now for Los Bravano. So they've swung the lead. And then Hadaka and Fujita against Terry Boy and Tajiri. Tajiri's going to get the win. So that's going to be two points for the Kayan side team. So they're going to jump up to seven. They're just you know, Now there's two teams behind Los Bravano with one point. And then the KM Super Junior Crew and the Lords of the Deep as Brian Billman's going to beat Lord Akira Kurakumi. So that will be a massive three points for the KM Super Junior Crew. Massive, massive stuff there. So six points. And just like that, that is 12. The first team to reach 12 points. And they have done a fantastic job. And I would say that kind of seals their fate of making it to the finals uh, with that one. Because just there, I don't think it's going to be enough time for anybody from Group D to catch them. So really, it's a race for these two groups. Groups B and C to see who's going to make it to the finals. Because you would assume Cosmic Dragon Kings are making it. And you would assume the Can-Am Super Junior Crew are going to make it as well. So now it's to find out, is it going to be TTS? Is it going to be the Super Generation Army? Is it going to be Legend? Is it going to be Kai and Tai, Los Bravano, or the Pure Timber Lecture Goku in the finals joining them? Uh, that seems to be the case as far as to find out who's going to make it in the end. As, uh, yeah, we already picked Rainbow Hall, so we already got the Night 3 show as far as that was last time we ran it. Now we can run Night 10 here. The 74 for Sasuke and, and Naimichi Marafuji. Great match for Sasuke with a 90. Marafuji, again, just still working with some great talent. Hopefully that's going to help him out in the uh, long run as Otani's going to beat the Hoss here with a Cobra Clutch in 11:31. Big one for Otani. The 67 for Hadaka and Fujita against uh, Yoshio Tajiri and Terry Boy. An upset for sure. Uh, but Kaintai gets the win thanks to, to Tajiri. And uh, he... Uh, I mean, at least he was the better of the two. His gimmick is getting stale, so I'm not exactly sure what his gimmick is, but we'll probably have to change it. As... Uh, uh, Joel and Jose Maximo losing to Los Pavano. Probably would have been a clean sweep, but it is what it is. It was Los Pavano with a big win, and they, they've been on a good little run. They're for a tag team, they're for Los Pavano. And, uh, oh, a medium concussion for Owen Hart. That is uh, big tough. Big tough for sure, because he's probably now going to be out. We'll probably have to replace him with Van Dam now potentially so that's um that's a huge loss for them damn that is a tough injury to get and plus that fucks over the match which is now going to hurt the show so again an even show gets absolutely fucked because of an injury uh that is brutal to see i mean lance did well lance did well uh i felt like uh, Lord, Akira, uh, Lord Akira Kurokumi did well, and uh, Sikosis did well, too. Actually, we should probably put over Sasuke instead of Lance. Yeah, because, I mean, he did a 90 in that opening match. He did great. That's tough, man. It was just a whole lot of good, just not a lot of great, unfortunately, in that match. Or on that show, really, as well. Just, you know, with a bunch of light green, but no, uh, nothing in the 80s. Just brutal. Rule to see, but now, we go on to night 11, and we just have 11, 12, 13, and 14 as far as the final lap, and then we'll go into the Grand Prix Finals. But Alrighty, so, uh, with Owen Hart out, he, of course, gets removed from the singles, uh, tournament as far as the, uh, the, the group, uh, singles matches, and then he's gonna get replaced by, uh, Owen Hart is being replaced by Rob Van Dam, so now... A little bit of a change of the show, because obviously we're going to have Aaron O'Grady taking on Owen Hart. Now, uh, it's going to be just a non-Grand Prix uh, exhibition matchup, as Aaron O'Grady and Chris Cash are going to take on Rey Mysterio Jr. in Skyda. 
now, so uh, just a little bit of a change of the card. We still kept that um, matchup on the pre-book stage just to keep it there. As Otani gave the, the gave the locker room a lift and created free drinks for everyone. So good shit there. Main events definitely going to be El Samurai and uh, Jushin Liger against Kikuchi and Katamoto. Big time matchup here. Liger's going to get the win over Siyoshi Kikuchi as well. So that's a massive two points for the Legend team. And the Fantastic and the, and the Cosmic Dragon Kings can follow that. As uh, three points for the Cosmic Dragon Kings. This pretty much seals it. That they will be going on in the finals. Then uh, Ricky Fuji and Prince Mako is going to have to go here. Because it's the Steel Show matchup. And Mako is going to beat Ricky Fuji. So that's one point for the Lords of the Deep. And TTS versus the Mama Lukes. Which TTS of course is going to get the win over the Mama Lukes. Of course the Junior Boy Tag Team Champions are going to lose there. And that will of course be Grady and Cash. Taking on Rey Mysterio Jr. and Skyda to open up the show. Which, uh, Rey Mysterio Jr. is going to get the win. Oh, he's the agent. Uh, we'll have that be Massive Chi instead. So, um, as far as we should be good on the booking analysis, yeah. Just the, you know, the Mama Luke's being used too much. This is the fucking Fantastic's being used too much. Just great. This is a huge victory, uh, for Prince Mako, though. As far as with the, the point beating Ricky Fuji as well. That's going to be huge for him. Now we, I think we're now to wherever we ran night four, yeah. I, we don't need to run Sendai Gymnasium. Uh, we're going to have a much bigger venue than that. Especially if we run the Sapporo Ice Arena. Or actually, yeah, we'll run this stadium instead. We'll save that Sendai Gymnasium for uh, whenever we get a bad card. Which is probably going to happen on night twelve. Just the way this kind of schedule is going. The even shows are a bit of a wash. I think uh, it's going to be a pretty good show here. 66 for the opener. As, oh great, Aaron O'Grady and Chris Cash, zero chemistry. So we know that at least that team of uh, Cash Money Inc. is not going to work out. But Ray Mysterio Jr. pins Chris Cash with the Mysterio Rana. Great performance from Ray. And even Sky to do with the 65. And 80 for Shinichi Funaki and Minoru Tanaka against the Mama Luke's. Yeah, Tony and James being eliminated back-to-back. -back. It's a good win for the champions. 66 for Ricky Fuji and Prince Mako. Uh, big upset there for Prince Mako. As, uh, yeah, and Owen Hart ends up being a joint winner thanks to Aaron O'Grady's already getting a win. And then with the forfeit win, that's two points for Cash Money, Inc. So that actually went really well for him after that uh, forfeit. But the air raid crash from Mako... 11.58. As uh, Super Astro, Ultimo Dragon, and Golden King beating the Fantastics. Wow, they had Ultimo Dragon get eliminated. That's kind of crazy. Probably would have been a clean sweep there, to be honest. But Bobby Fulton did well, which is still crazy that he's performing at a pretty high level. Uh, since the rest of the Fantastics have obviously fallen off, as Bobby Fulton probably should. But he's still going at a pretty good click. And a 92 for our main event, thank God, as uh, Liger and El Samurai. Boy, El Samurai is getting exciting to stay out down. Just great. Samurai gets the win uh, with Liger, but obviously he's the first eliminated, too. So that's a huge comeback for Liger. Beats Kikuchi, then Kanemoto. It's a nice win and a hell of a match, actually, the main event this show. So we'll take the 87. Shout out TTS, having a good match with the Mama Lukes as well. So yeah, we'll put over... Uh, Kanemoto and Kikuchi. And uh, Ricky Fuji, to be honest, for having that matchup. I mean, it was not easy to, to lose to Prince Mako like that. So, give everybody some praise there. It's on to Night 12 again. Alrighty, Night 12. As uh, we don't have to make any changes to the matches, uh, luckily for us. So we can just uh, hop right in here for Night 12. As uh, three count lords of the deep, I believe that is the trios match. Nope, it's the tag. Never mind. As uh, Lord Akira Kurokumi will be getting the window for three counts. That's two points for the lords of the deep. Dragon Kid versus Tommy Rogers. Unfortunately, don't think Dragon Kid's going to be over enough, but uh, he's going to get the win. So that's one point for the Cosmic Dragon Kings. Jerry Lynn and Dick Togo, which uh, a fun match though on paper, but uh, as far as unfortunately again, just popularity is going to affect that one. And that's going to be 11 minutes with Jerry Lynn getting the win for Lynn Sanity. 
The Kai and Tai versus Pure Temple of Shigoku as Brad Armstrong gonna get the win for Kai and Tai. And that is a massive three points, especially for how close Group B is. That is, uh, I don't know why it says Amazing Red on there. So we'll go ahead and just, boop, there we go, fix that. Then uh, the Ken Am Jr. Express and Cash Money Incorporated as uh, Lance Storm will be getting the win for the uh, Can Am Jr. Express, which we're going to give these guys a lot of time. You know, Kid Cash is great, especially working with like Van Dam and Easy Money, working with Van Dam and Lance Storm. That's a pretty good match, actually. So we're going to put that as the co main. So it looks like we needed a technical masterclass matchup. I don't know if if this would probably suffice. I think we're going to have to do it as that, because I just don't think... Well, I guess Jerry Lynn and Dick Togo's kind of has to be it, because I don't... It would... Yeah, I think that's probably for the best. I mean, Jerry Lynn's a good technical guy, obviously, and Dick Togo uh, it should be good technically enough to make this work. Oh, well, 57, not great, but it's better than... Uh, listen, we know what we signed up for when it comes to that group singles matches. We knew they were going to be bad. Uh, fortunately, though, I figured eventually they would get good enough to where one of these guys would be over enough. That has not been the case at all. But uh, night 12, start off with 37. Dislocated shoulder for Dick Togo. And uh, 55, so both men could win either way. Uh, the injury fucked that matchup, I think, a lot more, obviously, but brutal. Absolutely brutal. Dragon Rana, though, as far as for... Uh, Dragon Kid over Tommy Rogers, and he gets the win, and that will have it all be tied with two points with Dragon Kid, Jerry Lynn, and Dick Togo. So Tommy Rogers, the odd man out by the looks of it, a 51, so it could have been even better, obviously, if Dragon Kid was over enough. Again, it's crazy he's not. He should be in the recognizable section, but he just isn't, unfortunately for us. 81 for Lord Akira Kotokumi and Grand Naniwa over three count. Nice win for the tag team. Uh, Lords of the Deep. Shana Moore still has that injury, which slowed him down a little bit. But still, good, good little match, actually. Uh, all things considered. 78 for the K&M Junior Express and Cash Money, Inc. Love it, though, seeing Lance Norman and Van Dam get a win. Get cash, though. Just a uh, couple, 10 points or so. Not even that, 9 points behind Rob Van Dam. That is not bad at all for someone who just debuted. Relatively soon. As uh, Kai and Tai in the Pure Timbal of Shikoku is a 75. Just fucking great. Yeah, Brad Armstrong still dealing with that injury. Uh, they were the better team, though, Kai and Ty, so a big three points for them, though, in, in Group B, because Group B is so tough, and that, uh, that's another bad show for the even numbers. Unreal. Unfucking real Should have probably had that, I guess, be the main event then. But yeah, Lord Akira Kotokumi did great. Give some love to Dragon Kid, though. He was, he's been great this tournament. He's just been fucked over with his popularity. And, uh, I guess Lance Storm put him over, too. Crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. So that's night 12. We just have nights 13, 14 left. And then uh, the final show. So it is coming up very, very quickly. And it's still a jockeying position for either a Group B or Group C team to really break away from the pack and, and as far as to get ahead of the Can-Am uh, Junior crew, which I don't think is going to happen, or even the Cosmic Dragon Kings. Those two men, or those two teams, rather, are very, very, very much ahead and uh, it's going to be tough to catch up to him. But it's going to come down to, I think, whoever reaches that double-digit point differential is probably going to be the team that is going to make it to that third spot and uh, be in the Grand Prix matchup. But uh, yeah, on to the next night. We All right, night 13, as we just have two more shows left until we are at the final show. We're almost there. <laughs> We've almost made it. As uh, we have... Uh, this was going to just be a four-night show, uh, because we're, you know, we're down to, uh, basically, I don't think, there might be one, yeah, it's just nothing but trios left, so there's no singles matches left, it is just down to, uh, these four trios matches, and then, uh, the next night will be the rest of them, as uh, so Eddie Guerrero and Shinichi Funaki, this match, to give Eddie a win going into the matchup with Kiyoshi Nomura. That's going to be a technical masterclass matchup. I believe this is the Steal the Show matchup. World Class A-Holes and Linsanity. Oh, no, just regular matchup. As uh, Jerry Lynn's going to get the win. So that's three points uh, for Linsanity. Oh, wait. Dick Togo. Not able to wrestle. He, did he get hurt? 
What the hell? Oh, he dislocated his shoulder. He's out. Oh, wow. Uh, so, we're going to have to change it even more. So, let's, uh, yeah. Manage. Let's remove Dick Togo. Damn. It's kind of crazy. We've been pretty lucky with the injuries as far as from that perspective. Really haven't had a whole lot. So, with that, because I'm assuming with his dislocated shoulder, yeah, he's going to be out for 14 days. That's uh, really going to shake things up. I guess we could turn it into a tag match. I guess we could do that. Just have it be a normal 2v2 tag match. Jado and Ghetto uh, versus Jerry Lynn and Kilman. Go with that. Uh, we will change the finish now. Actually, uh, let's make it a steal the show matchup since we need it. And uh, we're going to have Giotto beat Kilman. We're just changing all sorts of shit. There's that. So we have our technical mask class. We have our steal the show match. And now for the rest of the card. Los Barbano, SAT. Which Vampiro is going to get the win. So that's three points for him. And, uh, and obviously Los Barbano. Three count, Cash Money, Inc. Uh, it's probably going to go before. Yeah, and this was going to be the Steal the Show matchup. Glad we don't need to do this anymore as a Steal the Show match. Glad we we're going to give these uh, six men a, uh, a chance to really show off their shit. But Easy Money is going to get the win over Ricky Fuji. So what a win for Cash Money, Inc. Again, a hell of a showing. And then Legend and TTS. This is a major, major matchup. With Jushin Thunder Liger winning after interference from Eddie Guerrero. So Liger with a brain buster. Maybe, you know, as far as his attacking Otani, Minoru Tanaka with, you know, Sasuke and Scorpion. With all this mayhem going on. Referees trying to, you know, get a hold of everything. And Eddie comes out from, uh, as far as, from the entranceway. As far as sneaks in off, off the top rope. He goes and Fox splashes him. And like, you know, then just, you know, he doesn't think that Eddie is a, you know, he doesn't see him or anything. He just, hears a big bump. Nobody's there, but he, you know, he sees that Tamora's still down and out and he's kind of holding his stomach. So he just capitalizes with a victory, with a, uh, you know, covering him up. So that's a big three points for Jushin Liger. As far as the uh, ranking system here, we'll go ahead I will probably just save it until we actually get to that date, to wait we run it all down. But a lot has changed, for sure, with uh, that big win in the main event. It's all oh, damn, it put us in Kanto for night 12. I didn't even... Damn, I didn't even look. Or I didn't catch it. Shit. Um, that is tough. Tough, tough, tough. Alright, yeah, night 6. Yeah, we'll run the uh, boat race place. To go. Oh god. And his we don't want that there. That could have been real bad. So I'll have that be the main event. As uh an 88 for the opening matchup, Eddie Guerrero and Shinichi Funaki. Uh Eddie with the win with the Corey special over Funaki. Funaki did outperform him, but uh it's a big win for Eddie Guerrero. And then Jado and Ghetto being Jerry Lynn and Kilman, which they did actually pretty well. It's a decent little matchup. Cross face of Jado. Jado over Kilman. That's a nice win. Cracked tailbone for Magnum Tokyo. Three count, just keep on picking injuries. Uh, as far as Kid Cash is uh, the best guy in the matchup, though. Actually, one point below Ricky Fuji. But, uh, yeah, this probably could have been even lower on the card. Not a great little matchup. But uh, Cash Money Inc. with three points. And Los Bravano with three points here with Vampiro. I mean, just head and shoulders with everybody else. LaParca, the second best guy in the match. Amazing Red, the third best guy. It's crazy that Anru... He's getting outperformed by guys who have just debuted this month. And he's been with us pretty much since the start. In a 90 for our main event, Legend beating TTS. Thanks to interference from Eddie Guerrero. What a win for Liger uh, specifically. And also, too, uh, we talked about uh, just as far as, like, them, you know, as far as having a, a bit of a, um, with, as far as commotion with, you know, as far as, 
referee trying to get a hold of everybody because, you know, everyone's in the ring. That would make more sense, obviously, because it'd come down to probably 1v1, where maybe a ref bump instead. And, uh, you know, as far as maybe a ref bump, maybe some after Sasuke gets eliminated, maybe Sasuke is still fighting um, with Tanaka. Maybe it's like back to back, and Sasuke kind of laid, you know, held, held her, stuck around to attack Minoru Tanaka. And uh, then, you know, as far as leading Tamora to be the last guy left. Because here it had Tamora being the first guy eliminated. That definitely wouldn't have been the case. Just a whole shit show of scenario there. But uh, thank God we had a good show here. Especially a good opener, good main event. It's an 88 for the show. They yeah, put over Funaki. We put over... Uh, uh, we can't put over a Liger. We are a Liger. Um, how to say? Uh, yeah, we'll go Sasuke. And, uh, yeah, we'll go Vampiro, because, I mean, he made that match of 77. If not for him, that would have been even worse. Good shit there. So on to ninth 14, the, the last lap of the Grand Prix. And we will see who will be the three teams battling it out for the 2003 Grand Prix in that ladder match. Alrighty, as the last lap, it is coming down to a major trios matchup, really. That is the Kai and Tylos Bravano matchup and... I would even say Legend and Super Generation Army. Those are the two matches that uh, we're definitely looking forward to seeing. Uh, really, Cosmic Dragon Kings and uh, the k and Super Junior Crew, they've already made it. They are the two teams that are going to the finals. We know that much. Uh, we've known that for a good bit, actually, of this uh, tournament. As uh, So we'll go just go ahead and add those matches now. Because they're not really of uh, much importance for the final lap. As uh, it will be Landstorm getting the win as well for the KM Super Junior crew. And then the Cosmic Dragon Kings against Lens Sanity, which is also going to be won uh, by uh, the Cosmic Dragon Kings. We're going to give them a little bit more time, at least 14 minutes. I mean, Christ, it is a trios elimination matchup, but uh, will be won in the end by the Cosmic Dragon Kings. So that's going to be another uh, three points for those. Team. So we'll just go ahead and do that now, as uh, we'll go ahead and make it 9, so that's going to be 17, and uh, we'll go ahead and another 17 for the Cosmic, uh, for the k and Super Junior Crew as well, as a clean sweep, really, uh, the, you know, identical records, clean sweep with the tag and the trios, and they even had two wins at the singles contest. So now, this Kai and Tylos Bravano match. If they can get, if Los Bravano specifically can get three points, or Kai and Tai gets three points, and Legend and TTS lose, really, it's if it's TTS and Kai and Tai with both wins and a Legend loss, then they're going to be tied, obviously, and it's going to come down to, really, uh, a hell of a tiebreaker, because Taka, Tajiri, and Brad Armstrong, they would have clean sweep of the, of the trios, but Otani would have more wins, and the tag team would have more wins, too. So it'd be a weird conundrum to be in, as far as from a tiebreaker perspective. Uh, but this could all not really matter if just Legend wins their match, because they will go on to the finals then. So we'll go ahead and add this match first, and we'll see. And yeah, Liger will, in fact, get the win over Koji Kanemoto. Huge win there. And Kai and Tai Los Bravano, just for the sake of seeing what's going to happen, the Jerry would get the win. So they were going to beat Los Bravano. That is a uh, big tough for sure. As I think we're going to have go here. Yeah. And uh, trying to think. I guess we can go ahead and add to 15 here. Clean sweep. Well, the Scorpio, Liger, Sasuke team. The Kinnips with Drew Jr. Crew, of course. Staying at 17. And uh, Kai and Tai with now 13. So they were just a couple points shy. Uh, TTS and the FBI. We'll see if TTS are going to finish with 13. Or if FBI are finally going to get a win. They will not. Tamora is going to get a win back after losing. As a uh, boy. Oh boy, that is a tough one to see. So as far as TTS 
13, Legend 15. Came down to just two points. And, uh, man, it's a tough break. Really, the the trios, you know, matches, they kind of... it. Um, I guess it, it, it was the difference maker, really. It's crazy to think that they had more singles points, but just that extra trios win was the difference. It came down to one match. And, uh, you know, you could say the same thing, really, for Kaintai and Los Pravano. One win would have changed it, would have gave them 14, would have kept them at 10. Just wasn't uh, meant to be, unfortunately. And, yeah, so uh, we have our three teams left. It will be a potential multiple winner for Legend if they can bring it down with a victory. That was, of course, back when they were the NWO still. But, uh, of course, the last year's Super Grand Prix winners are not involved in the tournament because of injury. Uh, Minoru Tanaka, Shinichi Funaki, and Otani came up short to TTS. So, would be uh, the first back-to-back -back as far as a, uh, or not back-to-back, -back, a first two-time Grand Prix winner. If they bring it down, but of course, for the Cosmic Dragon Kings and for the uh, the uh, Can Am Super Junior crew, they have a chance for history. So that is going to be pretty pretty massive. Uh, we're going to have on the final show, we're going to have uh, one, actually two, uh, two Grand Prix matches uh, that were basically they were not going to matter as far as the end rating. So figured we'd do that. We'll have the main event be the you know, obviously the Grand Prix finals but uh, Eddie Guerrero Kyoshi Demora that match will be taking place as well uh, we're also going to see uh, TTS as far as uh, let's just go to Minoru Tanaka since TTS the Super Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Champs lost to Kikuchi and Kanemoto uh, they probably will get a matchup it's tough though because obviously uh, with the Junior Tag League finals Really, it should come down to whoever won uh, the Junior Heavyweight Tag League it should probably get the first title matchup. But um, it was Ultimo Dragon and Super Astros, who are, of course, in the Grand Prix Finals. So, hence why that is taking place instead. I uh, felt like, yeah, I feel like we've kind of talked about everything now. We can uh, add just a couple more minutes onto the matchup. The uh, it, It's going to be interesting, because really... I don't know what matchup I want in Fire Pro. Probably the tag team title matchup. Because I don't want this in Fire Pro. Obviously, we can't do the main event in Fire Pro. So, it's going to come down to the tag team title matchup being in Fire Pro. But, uh, yeah, we... Uh, just make sure we pick a good venue that's not Kanto. Yeah, we kept the Sendai Gymnasium open, but... I think... We are just going to run... Uh, the Osaka Joe Hall Arena. Perfect. Let's run it. Cosmic Dragon Kings and Lynn Sanity here get a uh, good little matchup at 86. Good ratings from uh, the Cosmic Dragon Kings. Are the pretty good match, actually, for Killman, Super Crazy, and Jerry Lynn. Just glad nobody got hurt there. In the uh, Tactical Masterclass matchup, which Legend gets the win. Massive victory for them. And really, you could... Thank Eddie Guerrero for this. If Eddie doesn't uh, attack TTS, maybe they would have gotten the win, and maybe they would have made it to the finals. Who knows? A lot of things are going to change. TTS beating the FBI here as uh, TTS getting a... I'm surprised it even got an 86, but a good rating. Uh, Garza and James Mamaluke, though, in the 60s. So it just... Even though we didn't have a lot of good shows this tour, it benefited so many guys of being able to have high-profile matches throughout a tour. Uh, this did not go over well, though. Lance Thornton, Rob Van Dam, and Brian Billman. Bit of a clusterfuck there. We should have put that way lower on the card. And it was definitely my bad. And an 80 for our main event. God damn it. <laughs> As, uh, Vampiro, he did his thing. But everybody else, not so much. Brad Armstrong again dealing with his injury. Uh, Tajiri with a 65 and a 73 for Taka Michinoku. Just the better... Uh, it's a weird one because... Everybody outperformed Anaru and La Park on the other team, but obviously Vampiro is just so much better than everybody else. It's a weird conundrum to be in. At least it didn't result in any popularity changes, but man, having two 86s and 83, but only having an 80 main event really fucked us up there. Pretty brutal to see. 
And as far as our, uh, me and Uda put over, I guess we'll go Tamora, just to get him a little bit of an edge going into the uh, title matchup. We'll go Sasuke, which, well, I mean, we've put over Sasuke a good bit. Eh, fine. And, uh, yeah, we'll go Super Astro. And that is the Grand Prix as far as going into the finals. We know at least five of the matches. Uh, we'll probably add one more, of course, uh, like a non, uh, you know, non Grand Prix type of setting matchup. Not exactly sure what it would be, if it's going to be a singles or a tag, uh, but it is going to be one or the other. I don't want it to be a trip or a uh, three trios match. Jesus Christ, I'm having an aneurysm trying to think of trios. Won't be a trios match since we already have a lot of trios matches on the card. So that's the plan. As on to the Grand Prix, we go. Alrighty, as uh, we are lined up, ready to go for our Fire Pro matchup, is our tag team titles on the line. We'll see if Koji Kanemoto and Seoshi Kuchi could get another win in this uh, same calendar month, or will they have a successful defense from TTS as the challengers coming out first, of course. Kanemoto, Kikuchi, Super Generation Army, you know, as far as for Kikuchi, you know, he's now been in as far as just in the save itself, has been there for 11 years. Uh, Koji Kanemoto, of course, came over when we did the merger with New Japan. But, uh, my God, have these two men been out of a team for the Super Generation Army? And have, uh, you know, as far as teaming up with Masao and Kobashi, respectively. Those days are far behind them, though, unfortunately, for them. But, uh, Funaki in Minoru Tanaka. Part of TTS. Naki with the uh, the singlet. The only guy wearing a singlet <laughs> in this matchup. And Minoru Tanaka is going to be a lot of fun to see. This edit is a lot of fun. And starting off with a color now bow tie up. How about that? Man, that's the string. Nobody's getting the better of him. Kanemoto and Kikuchi. Or Kanemoto and Kikuchi. Kanemoto and Minoru Tanaka, rather. Are, uh... Pretty locked in, and pretty similar styles. Side headlock from Kanemoto. So I thought they were gonna potentially off the ropes, but no, another side headlock from Kanemoto. These two dangerous strikers, and European uppercut. Funaki get tagged in. Suplex on him. Kanemoto counters with a suplex of his own. Oh, now that European uppercut, man, he just brings that away down with a Funaki then with a couple of body kicks. Test the strength again. Neither man getting the better of each other. Oh, what a shot. Another shot. Oh my god, three in a row. Knee to the midsection. Funaki takes him down. With a fireman's carry takeover. In comes Kikuchi to eat shit on that one. Off the ropes. Missed it. Knee again to the midsection. Chop, knee, going after each other. Oh, here we go. Chops, forearms. Chops again. Oh, and Kikuchi getting the better of him, but at what cost? As he immediately falls down as well. In comes Tanaka again. Quick tags from both teams. Missing with the jumping in Zaguri. Tanaka, though. Oh, what a spin kick. Dropped him. With an Kikuchi again off the ropes. Up, oh, missed it that time. Test of strength. Oh, Minoru Tanaka definitely has him there. Drop toe hold off the ropes. Oh, God, what a drop kick. I thought he was going to send him all the way out to the floor. Body kick. Missed it with the Inziguri. Another body kick. Oh, God. Three body kicks off the ropes. Oh, Kikuchi gets back up and he pumps the brakes. In comes Kenimoto again. Snap bear. From Tanaka. Oh, into the corner. Now, Kenimoto wisely... Body slamming his way out of it. Went for a cover. He was in the uh, challenging corner. So at least that was a wise decision there. But immediately. It uh, is uh, forged. And as far as uh, into uh, now a counter now. Oh nope. Tanaka roll through. Jumping drop kick. And a nip up as well. Roll through. Into an arm, uh, arm ringer of his own. Kanemoto. Just gonna break out of it, and now we're gonna tag in Funaki. Fire and scary takeover from Funaki. 
in these forearm shots. Brutal knees of the midsection, though. I mean, Funaki's got his game plan into a powerbomb. Oh, no, countered. Into a Hurricane Rana armbar. Yeah, it was not looking good for Koji Kanemoto, but he, uh, still hanging in there. Snap suplex from Funaki. Tag it in Kikuchi. Shot to the midsection. Oh, in Zaguri. From Funaki, I thought he was going to maybe get him off the ropes, so no body slam. Drags him out of the ropes there. Going to tag in Kanemoto, yes. Sorry, tag in Minoru Tanaka. Out of the ropes. Sleeper hold. Nope. Nothing come out of that. Off the ropes. Oh, nice spin kick, but uh, missed it, though. Kikuchi with the zero fighter kick. Nice little body slam. Oh, go behind. Release German suplex. Minoru Tanaka is really cooking now. I thought he was going to maybe go for another Enziguri off the ropes. Ducked it. Did Tanaka and tag it in Funaki. The quick tags. I mean, that has been very evident of the champions as far as making sure the fresh guys out there. Oh my god, we got a almost a, almost a stretch buffler. A bit of a different variation. Kind of more so behind the knee in the thigh. Not so much behind like the uh, the ankle, but he is a uh, uh, that was a hell of a move though for Seoshi Kikuchi to try to wear down Funaki. Now a spin kick the back. Oh my god, another body kick. Oh, they're trading strikes. Forearms and chops. Kikuchi watching on as Kanemoto gets the best of him. Here we go. Oh, nope, that was gonna be a potential uh, suplex. No, uh, yeah, dragons. Uh, screw leg whip there. From Kanemoto. Knees from Tanaka. Now an ankle lock. That's in the ropes. Body kick. Oh, off the ropes. Yeah, that, uh, you know, Funaki had to jump down and get out of the way of that one. Another ankle lock. This time, towards the center of the ring. Not happening, though. He's gonna hang on. Body slam. From Kanemoto. Oh, here we go. Kick to the back. Oh, what a shot. Another snapmare. Kick to the back again. Arm bar. They're gonna get it. Oh, go behind. Countered. Off the ropes. Oh, what a sunset flip. Two in now. That was almost it, though. Both men tagging out. Naki Kikuchi coming in. Fire and carry take over again. Oh, caught the body kick, though, this time. Got a leg lock. Naki's gonna hang on. In Zaguri again. Picks him up. Oh, what a spin kick. Actually nicely done. Funaki, off the ropes, here we go, basement drop kick. Oh, Kikuchi, now what a suplex, oh, rolls through, another suplex, three suplexes from Kikuchi. Going up to the top, that's all, that's better of it. Yeah, he was in the uh, champion's corner too, that probably would have been a bad idea, Funaki with another basement drop kick. Off the ropes, Bulldog now. And another drop kick, my god. He is a man possessed right now with these drop kicks. And now a couple of forearm shots. Got a suplex of lands on his feet. That's Funaki. Tagging him with North Tanaka. See what Tanaka's gonna do here. Oh. Catches Koji Kenamoto. Oh boy. Oh, <laughs> sunset flip. <laughs> or a sunset flip, Jesus. A dope through uh Siyoshi Kikuchi. Unreal. A tope suicida. And now Kanemoto looking for an armbar. Double countout would be pretty tough to see here. There we go. They roll back in at 13. Oh, leg kick. Oh, what a fucking drop kick that was. Targeting the legs, working on the legs. That's a smart strategy. Another sunset flip. This time in the ropes. As a snap air and a kick to the back. Deep cover. Tanaka gets a two count though. Champ is looking good. Oh. Played the little uh, mind games there. Went for the body kick. Only just roll through. Go for the ankle lock. And another fire and scary takeover from Funaki. What <laughs> The shooter. That is Shinichi Funaki. I mean, he is uh, a tough customer in there. 
DDT. I mean, this could be a huge night for TTS if Kyoshi Tomura retains and we see Funaki and Kanemoto retain, they will still keep their belts. Up to the top rope. Oh, countered. Funaki waiting for him. Big crossbody. Doesn't look the leg. Might not need it. Oh, just barely kicked out the Kikuchi, so they're gonna keep keep on fighting. Are the challengers. Man, these elbows at the back of the head. In comes Tanaka. Oh, suplexes them to the floor. Jesus. And down they go. The floor. Snapmare again. Tanaka. Oh, went for the jumping in. Zagari. Nobody home, though. Throws him into the apron. Both men. He's thrown into the apron. Uh, now throws him back and forth between the barricade and the uh, apron. In comes Tanaka. In comes Kikuchi. Oh, went for the arm ringer, but again, Tanaka, one step ahead of it, arm ringer of his own. Imagine <laughs> Kikuchi taps, that'd be uh, pretty wild. Into the challenging corner, tag it in Kanemoto. Oh god, going up to the top rope. What's he going for? Oh, Minoru Tanaka rolls through, off the top. One, two, and no. Just kicked out, did Koji Kanemoto? What a counter, though, from Minoru Tanaka. That looked... Pretty fucking dangerous, though, for Kujiganamoto. Oh, my. Moonsault. A run-up moonsault, and just about did it. Almost had new champs just like that. Funaki Kanemoto. Trading strikes. Spin kick from Kanemoto. And now, off the ropes. Big overhead belly to belly suplex. Kanemoto's really cooking now, but Funaki trying to change the tide. Trio O. Just kicking away at his dick. <laughs> It's quite a strategy, as uh, Funaki now off the ropes. Oh, God, double down. Both men down. Funaki, I'd say, probably should make it... Uh, count, or, about that account, it should make the, uh, the tag, but what a beautiful brain buster that was. Maybe Funaki is better off staying in there. And, oh, Kikuchi. Oh, what a roll through Sunset Flip, but somehow Funaki kicks out, and another Zero Fighter kick. In comes Tanaka. Well, Tanaka going to the top rope, 450. Nailed it, but that's in the ropes. Great job, though, for the 450. Beautifully done, and now both men trading strikes. Drop kicks him. Does Kikuchi gets the better of the exchange? Oh, nice little sidewalk slam. Another one. He's really, uh, beating him down. Another sidewalk slam. My God, going to the top. Oh, the thought better of it when he got up. Another snapmare. And he's pointing to the buckle again. This time, out of the ropes in this time. Oh my god, Kikuchi kicks out. Thought for sure that was going to be it. Minoru special number two, though, right away. But again, in the ropes. Minoru Tanaka's not taking any chances now. You can tell that he is going for the finish. And now, release German suplex into the enziguri. Uh, but Koji Kanemoto wisely getting out of the way. In comes Funaki. Almost 15 minutes have gone by, though, in this uh, Fire Pro matchup, so we might not have to tack on a lot of time to this tag team title matchup once we get to Fire Pro, but my god, or once we get to TW, rather. Yeah, there's a more body kicks up kick now from Funaki. Oh boy, go behind. Elbow to the back. Enziguri again. Funaki. Chops. Fireman Scary take over again. Oh, what a overhead belly to belly suplex again. Just Kanemoto suplex is a really a big difference maker. Throws him into the championship corner. Oh, God. Moonsault. Potentially. Yep. Oh, my God. And he gets the arm bar, too. Right at the 15 minute mark. We'll just go ahead and put 30 on it. We'll just double it. What a win. And your new tag team champions in Koji Kanemoto and Seiyoshi Kikuchi. Tough break for TTS to lose not once but twice against the same team. As, uh, man, what a win, though, as Kanemoto beats Funaki. We'll go ahead again, just put 30 on it. Kanemoto beating Shunichi Funaki. And now, we can go back over to Fire Pro here shortly. As, uh, let's just make sure, I just gotta make sure 
This is good. Yep, we're good to go. Alright. Let's go to back over DW. As actually, let's go ahead and just close out Fire Pro while I'm thinking about it. There we go. As uh, the opening contest, Blonde Bombers, we haven't seen them obviously with the uh, Grand Prix going on. They open up the show getting a win over Octagon and Blue Demon Jr. The Blonde Bombshell from Chris Candido over Blue Demon Jr. in 20 minutes is a 53. Hoof for this matchup. Pure Templar Shigoku gets the win over the Spanish Assault team, but at what fucking cost? Amazing Road with a 63, though. That's actually pretty good. Senshi with a 55 as well. A lot of the new generation of uh, Supermax guys really showing off there. It sucks about Kentor Shiga's broken ribs, but it is what it is. 76 for Lords of the Deep and uh, Cash Money, Inc. It's Chris Cash and Easy Money in the 50s. So specific is here. Kid Cash outperforms Super Delphin. Lord Akira Korakumi gets the win for his team. A big three points, even though at the end it does not matter, of course, because they didn't make it to the finals. As the tag team titles, changing hands, Kyoji Kanemoto, of course, you just saw, beating Shinichi Funaki. Chronic knee pain for the challengers, now new champs. Tough break, though, for TTS. And even tougher is our co-main event for the Junior Boy title. We have a new champion. Eddie Guerrero gets the win in 20 minutes. Wins back the Junior Boy title. Of course, this was the man who beat Eddie Guerrero. It being Kyoshi Demore. The reason why we're ch changing the belts. Uh, Kyoshi Demore is about to take an MMA fight. So he's going to be gone for roughly six months or so. And having a heavyweight champion gone just... I don't think it makes sense. Having the, the, you know, the main man leaving. Don't think that'd be the right call. So went with this instead. And our main event... It is... A 83 figured it wasn't going to be that great of a matchup, but we saw some crazy shit in this matchup. First of all, Sasuke taking a crazy bump. Basically, uh, doing his tope that he does off the top, like the sunset kind of swanton bomb deal. Uh, literally onto eight people from inside the ring to outside the ring. Uh, instead of, you know, maybe potentially going to retrieve the item, you know, as far as he sets it up outside the ring. You know, sets it up, like, on the... Uh, on the ropes in the ring and does a dive to the floor. Uh, Scorpio and Rob Van Dam, they uh, take a bump as far as um, it's a stunt bump. It's more so uh, going through uh, tables at ringside, uh, going uh, basically, they're climbing the ladder. They're not fully on top of it, but uh, as far as gets um, taken over. By um, Lance Storm, Storm you know, pushes it over and down. They go uh, from inside the ring to the floor. I guess that still would probably be a crazy bump. But the, the reason why I called it a stunt one is because it would have been not so high up. And uh, the tables would have been uh, basically there to break their fall more so than anything. Just in the scheme of things, you know, like Sasuke's crazy bump, it's those guys are catching them. Whereas Scorpio and Van Damme. They're not as high up, and they're going through tables that kind of help break the fall. But still, a hell of a win for Ultimo Dragon and the Golden Cosmic Kings. As I forgot to do the... Uh, let's go back to the booking sheet, because I want to do a press conference with the new champs. Oh, with the new champs, with the Supermax 64 Grand Prix winners. Yeah, we'll just call it the winners PC. As Ultimo Dragon, Super Astro, and the Golden King, obviously, with their funds, with their, uh, as far as after the hard work they've put in, everybody from Dragon Kid to Golden King, Super Astro, and Ultimo Dragon, now they are tasked with what they want to do next. Because they already get a title matchup with Kikuchi and Kanemoto at the, as far as we'll just go ahead and just now continue to show, at uh, Super Art Stopper. So for them, with their uh, request, it's really coming down to maybe they keep that title request in case they lose it, or does Ultimo Dragon or Super Astro challenge Eddie Guerrero for the heavyweight title? And we'll see those two battling it out at March 
uh, at March Madness, or as far as March Massacre, rather. As um, that is the plan for them, as far as they laid it out. They said, we have no, uh, nothing to hide. We love what we have as far as our group. We proved with this Grand Prix we are the best unit in Sumac 64. We want the gold now. And as far as for them, Super Astro and Ultimate Dragon, even Golden King and Dragon Kid, I think these four men have proven to be a hell of a unit. They've grown a long way, especially Dragon Kid. And they have um, really proven themselves to be a top act. They get the big win in the main event as well. And now, we'll see them on the title hunt in the next couple of shows. But Eddie Guerrero, new Junior Heavyweight Champion, new Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Champions for Kikuchi and Kanemoto. A crazy show, but uh, we should have had Eddie in tomorrow, probably main event. But at least we had a fun match, and I'm glad nobody got hurt too. We had a lot of crazy shit happening at that uh, Grand Prix final matchup. But that uh, that will do it though for this episode. Thank you all for watching. So we're gonna put over Astro and Ultimo Dragon and Eddie Guerrero, as uh, that will do it for the Grand Prix. And we'll catch you guys next time for the Super Heart Stopper show. Take care, everyone.